we we the other four guys we said the twenty points or less total. We said Edie could score forty. It doesn't matter if the other four guys only score twenty. They can't win. I don't know and, if I recall two three point shots getting blocked in the same game by the opposition. Yeah. yeah. How about the scouting report from Pastner? That turn out to be any good? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. How often does it happen where the best team all year ends up winning it in college hoops? I don't very, think it happens. Very infrequently. How how often does it happen in the NFL? Well, yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, I just the, the Ravens were the best team. In college hoops specifically, I feel like it doesn't happen often at all the number one overall seed wins it like that doesn't happen a whole lot all right i'll be right back what do you think for a poll question <laughs> <laughs> well we asked <laughs> Do you guys think there's any chance Kentucky calls Don Staley? They won't hire, no. but just no. Call. no, 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 they won't even go. No, home. okay, no. I just, I, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just think it's interesting. I heard someone say that yesterday and it got me thinking. They oh. would never hire her, but at no. what point is she gonna no. start? No, in this cycle? no, no, okay, <laughs> I guess. That one ain't holding any water. No. Okay, here we go. That's you are listening to Miller and Moulton exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. Top. Of the morning to you on the day after we put the college basketball season to bed. It is Masters Week after all. Hold on one second. How the heck are you? Miller and Moulton. Millerandmoulton.com. Miller underscore Moulton on X. Ah, it's a day. It's an adrenaline show. We were up late for us last night, putting the college basketball season to bed. Hats off to UConn doing something which hasn't been done in a generation. We got Purdue. We got them there. Let's see what they got. And UConn said, yeah, we got this, Mark. We got this. Their defense was staggeringly good. What they did to Purdue's guards and shooters yesterday was just unheard of because Purdue had been making threes against everybody the entire yeah. tournament. 
entire season. Except for a stretch against NC State in the semifinal game, about a four-minute stretch where they shut him down. Purdue made threes against everybody. Averaged eight made threes a game, averaged 20 attempts a game. They were one of the most efficient three-point shooting teams in the country. I think by percentage, they were the best. They were only able to attempt, attempt seven threes in the game. Hell, at least two of them were blocked. When's the last time you saw a three-point shot blocked? When's the last time you saw two blocked in the same game? I, I don't I don't recall seeing that. So um I will say, you know, first 10, 12 minutes for it, we had some pace and Purdue's playing great. And for a moment, they got a 23-21 lead. And you're like, well, we said Purdue needs to bring their A game. And guess what? They're bringing their A game. All right, boys. And UConn's Garden Edie, as Bill Raftery would say, man to man. And it's like, okay, all right. And they're letting them bang. Good day. This is going to be fun. And then you David, got it's the- all about that pace, about that pace, because UConn had a fevered pace that Purdue just couldn't keep up with. No, when Edie went to the bench there for, what was it, like 33 seconds? And uh, Klingon gets it in a dunk, and then they get a stop, and they come down the other way, and they draw a quick foul, and Painter's got to look at Edie going, I got to throw you back in, big fella. I don't know. The only shot we've got. Yeah, you got to play. I know you're tired. Hell, I'm tired for you, but you got to go back in. So... UConn did what they did most of the year. A couple of slip-ups. You know, after a big win, they lost at Creighton. We saw that. We actually saw that coming. It was a, we, we told you that was coming. Right. Because that was when they were, still had the streak of they hadn't beaten a top 20 team on the road in 11 years or something like that. And we're like, hey, here we go. Creighton on the road. Bet against them. Creighton hit their threes, beat them. And that was it. And they never turned back. And they just destroyed teams through the tournament for the second consecutive year. Danny Hurley is clearly the best coach in college basketball right now. How about their sets in the half court? How good were they? Backdoor cuts. So much movement going on, David. Yep. That I would be amazed to see what their practices look like. With that much movement. It shows you why they can run at the pace they can run because their half-court sets are electric. They continuously get high percentage or wide-open shots with just seconds left on the shot clock. How many times did you see it? It's like, uh uh-oh, under 10 seconds. They're going to have to rush it here. They didn't rush it. They didn't rush it. They just, you know, then a little penetration, pump fake, dish, dunk, little penetration, fake, kick out, three. They're fun to watch. They're really good. They do remind me, even though, you know, the Florida team from 06 and 07, the whole team came back. So it was cool. It was like, hey, we know these guys. You know, meanwhile, you know, the four of the top eight guys from UConn were new. Well, a generation later, it's changed a little bit. But I don't know. I could watch UConn play every day. They're fun. I could see where Hurley would start to wear on you, though. You either He's... find him entertaining or annoying. No, it's it during the game, it gets annoying. It does. <laughs> but he, they're so damn good. What do you do? You just tip your cap. You guys caught the shot of him walking across the court and talking smack to Zach Eady, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or vice versa. I don't really know who started exactly. it, but it was that was good. <laughs> uh, so what do you think? Last night earned him uh, an extra million a year from uh, the Kentucky offer? Oh, absolutely. Or maybe two million. Do you think maybe Kentucky was going to go 10 a year? And now they said, you know what? Let's just make it 12. 
What do you say? We'll offer him, uh, you know what, seven for 85. We'll leave it to 12 and change. You know, as Trent likes to say, sprinkle. You know, 12 and a sprinkle. Six and oh, UConn is in championship games. They are. They've been to seven Final Fours. They lost in a semi one time. But if they get to Monday, they don't lose. And for that matter, isn't Gino eleven and zero? Yes, because in the semi or in the semis, he's like twelve and eleven. His record is not you know a little right. above five hundred. But in the final, he's undefeated. So I think the UConn men and women, when they get to the title game, are seventeen and zero. That'll play. And I know that the rest of the country doesn't think of UConn as a, quote, blue blood. But they've won six titles since 99. Kentucky's won four since the Carter administration. In fact, they've won four since the Kennedy administration. And we, without hesitation, say Kentucky's a blue blood. Maybe the bluest of blue bloods, right? I mean, Connecticut in the last 25 years, by the way, has won one more natty than Coach K won in his whole career. I mean, they've won a lot. The Big East, by the way. Should this enter into the equation on a selection Sunday? The last two years, Mark, they keep throwing bids at the Mountain West. The Big East has won seven national championships since 2011. 2011. Because UConn's won four, Nova's won two, and Louisville won the title in 2013, no matter if they took the banner down and threw it in a closet, because they were in the Big East at the time. They've won seven of the last 13 natties have come out of the Big East. Push comes to shove, don't we have to say next year, ah, give it to the Big East, too. Ah, get a little something for, as, as Trent would say, ah, let's sprinkle a bit from the Big East. And the Mountain West got favored over the Big East this year. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some of those quote unquote mid major, they're high majors in college hoop, but they got favored over the Big East. And David, I think you bring up a good point. This has to be referenced. It won't. It won't. It never is. Every year is a new year. Every year is a new year. And they're going to tell you that. But can we all agree it should be? Oh, it's not only that it should be, it's that they need to. Again, they need to worry work on these last picks. I don't want to harp on it too much, but these last teams and conferences that have learned how to game the system a little bit to get their net rating where it needs to be uh, doesn't mean a hill of beans. DC in our Twitch chat room wondering why was it not a technical when he touched Cameron on the floor? I, I guess it's a technical if he touched the Purdue player. But, I mean, if your guy's standing there <laughs> trying to get him to move, he's not moving. Uh, I mean, what I found funny was the officials, usually when a coach is out of the coach's box or they step onto the court, the officials will at some point in time warn them, you know, or put their hand up as they're running by, like, move back, coach. Hurley was four steps onto the court one time. The official just ran around him while running down the court. Oh, my God, it's Hurley. Uh, just, uh, he's not going to change. I'll, I'll, we'll just work around it. He's got to lose four to six pounds a game. He he puts in some serious steps in a game. He's active, David, as a coach. He does not curse much, though. It, it's just it's just screaming and yelling, but he doesn't curse much. Well, I caught a couple. Yeah, no, no. I much. mean, when they when when I love Ian Eagle says, "Yeah, he said that was a charge." No, no, no. there was a word he had before charge. No. He said it was an f and flop. Is, yeah, is that, yeah, right, yeah. But he doesn't. I mean, in comparison to a lot of other coaches. 
if for no other reason than he usually has his dad sitting right next to him on the bench. Okay, he doesn't want to curse around his dad. You know, I mean, cursing around your parents isn't that kind of like when you're watching a movie with your parents and all of a sudden a sex scene comes on? It's like, oh man, this is awkward. Can't curse in front of dad. So you've won a couple natties and you're 51 years old and married with a family. You still have your dad sitting right there. You can't curse around dad. Unless dad starts cursing, then he can curse around dad. around dad. I don't curse around my, I try not to curse around my mother. Okay. Around my father. Neither of my parents care. Shop talk. But I hear my, you. My mother to this day, I have to ask permission to swear. In fact, I'm only allowed to swear if it's a direct quote. If I'm direct, no, 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 no. Especially when my grandparents were alive, I'd have to say, now I'm quoting, there's a dirty word coming. Am I allowed to use it? And sometimes I was told no. Okay. All right. I'll clean it up. Won't be as funny, but I'll clean it up. So hats off to UConn. So the uh, uh, the two best teams, Mark, in the women's and the men's bracket, uh, they won the natty. How about that? Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island and Inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You are listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Paula, I'm fired up for you. It's got to be fun. Campus Martius, I'm sure it's looking beautiful this time of year. David, how long did it take to shave yesterday? Oh, uh, 25 minutes.
for a global entry TSA interview, Paula. Uh, all just to get a TSA pre-check? <laughs> uh. Mark, did you take a nap yesterday? Right after the show. Right after the show. Then two energy drinks during the afternoon got me through the night. Wow. Place I went to last night had 48 beers on tap. None of them uh, national. All of them local, regional, you know, all the, the Millers and the Buds and the stuff you had to get in bottle. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I love those kind of places. Flag had a Lexington, Kentucky IPA. Did it cry halfway through because it lost early? <laughs> no. <laughs> Was the first half better than the second? The first part did go down well. Archangel, still looking for it. I'm still looking for it. If you find it, send it to me. But yes, that's on the radar. Is that the inside the Parker? Yes. Mark brought that up just before we went live. but I usually finalize the play of the day at about seven. Well, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's on MLB.com. Radio callers? Yeah, well, I mean... Cause that's always the trick. I, I can always find it, but it's, you know, you got to find the radio. WLW. That helps. Thank you. 700 WLW. Apparently he, uh, less than 15 seconds. It took him. Yeah, we got it. Thank you for the help, everybody. Thank you, everybody. All right, here we go. In three. Welcome back to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. Twenty-one minutes after the hour. Hell of a show lined up for you today, if we do say so ourselves. I mean, it's a Tuesday, so we got the normal, you know, David Sampson coming up at the top of the hour. Pat Kerwin in our eight o'clock Eastern hour. But we begin our master's preview. Our buddy Bob Herrig will join us. He just wrote a book about Tiger and Mark. Oh, 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 the Tiger hype train is on. The Tiger hype train is a chugging. Stop it. No, no, this isn't us. Will Zalatoris, I've never seen him hit the ball better. Great. Michael Will, Collins. Okay. Will, Will Tiger hit his played his best shots before you were alive or when you couldn't remember. So your re point of reference is fantastic, but irrelevant to me. Well, he did win the thing five years ago. Stop. I mean, you know, don't know what to tell you. Shot a 31 on the front nine two days ago. Michael Collins walked the course with him yesterday, said, uh, 
It looks like Tiger Woods sitting the ball really well. Just saying. Just saying. Have a little first round 68. People lose their minds. Oh, yeah. Lose their minds. So Bob Harrig will join us in a little more than an hour. Because Tiger's going to tie Jack. Oh, boy. Going to win his sixth. Going to pass Sam Snead and become the all-time winner. Because he's tied with him with 82 wins. He's going to get that 83rd. That's right, Steve, in our Twitch chat room. You've got it. Tiger of the field. Hey, should we ask Scheffler or the field, or is that just too crazy? No, that's actually the question you ask. Scheffler's numbers are unbelievable, David. They're the most dominant since, well, the aforementioned Tiger Woods in the early 2000s. Exactly. They really are. T to green. Randall Chambly went on a golf channel yesterday and said, if Scheffler puts it well, he'll win by eight or more. <laughs> that's, that's Tiger-esque. So Scheffler's the biggest favorite since Tiger in 2013. Last season on the, the tee to green shots gained, Scheffler gained a little over 2.6 shots on his opponents. It's the best single season mark since Tiger did it in 2016. Do you know what Scheffler's so far done this year? He's bettered his shots gained tee to green at almost 2.8 shots per. It's ridiculous. So apparently that's pretty good if you're gaining like nearly three shots around. Uh, you know, that 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 has you winning by like 11 or 12 near, near the end. He's gone win, win, and T2. Right, because he missed a six-footer. Mm-hmm. I get it. You know, Ryan's in our Twitch chat room. He said, in my master's pool, we've taken Scheffler off the board, the Tiger rule. And he's already won here, right? Right. Uh, so, uh, come on, they're taking the field. Apparently, they got all these analytics, and according to them, there's only like eight or nine guys that can win. Yes. And I find it hysterical because one of them is Xander Shoffley. He doesn't win. I know he can win. I know he can put himself in position to win. But he doesn't win. I am tempted to pick him. There aren't many guys playing better. But I just know he's not going to win. He's not going to win. He's not going to win. I know that. Who finishes better, Shoffley or John Rahm? Shoffley. I'll take that bet. Okay. All right. And I won't take it after rounds one, two, or three, because you might win all three of those bets. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, uh, who is Shoffley? Uh, is Shoffley the Bills? All right, who who's Shoffley? He's Ricky Fowler. Yeah, he's Ricky Fowler, David. And I'm not making the same mistake I made picking Ricky to win all these majors that he never won when he got hot. <laughs> uh, so. Of course, you know, Mark, they can't figure in the uh, LIV golfers in with their analytics. You know, they, they don't have enough info on them. So, you know, none of those guys count, apparently. Huh. I, some of them, I think, are pretty good, but uh, they don't count, Mark. I mean, I don't know if there's an, you know, a local course rule, you know, pass that they can't win, that they're not allowed to win. You know, Rom won when he was a member of the PGA Tour. Now, you know, can't win now. You know, you can win a PGA, 
You can win an open championship. I'm not sure that the folks at Augusta will let someone from LIV win. Letting them serve dinner. <laughs> Only because they have to. Only because they have to. Hell, they basically convinced Phil to stay away one year. To not even play. I mean, how many groups, organizations, can make you an offer you can't refuse, kind of like the committee that runs Augusta? The mob or the committee that runs Augusta? Who do you want to get the phone call from? Well, I'll I'll still, uh, you know, I'm still a little scared of the mob. They're not as strong as they used to be, but their methods of ending things are better than those at Augusta National. But I get your point. Well, and I agree with you. However, I actually think there's more room to negotiate with the mob. I mean, how much negotiating gets done? None. When Augusta calls you? None. I mean, CBS doesn't get to negotiate with Augusta. They show up for the meeting. They sit down. And Augusta tells them, okay, how it is they think they did and what it is they would like done differently for next year. And CBS nods and says, let me write that down. You writing that down? We're going to write that down two, three times. Yes, we've got it. Mm -hmm. No David Faraday? Got it. Nope, he's dead to us. Nope. It just hasn't been seen or heard from there since the late 90s. Nope, right, got to go. So I actually think I'd take the phone call from the mob. I understand the consequences could be worse, but I actually feel like I have some room to negotiate, that I can work it off. There's no working it off with Augusta. I see your point. <laughs> but anyway, Mark, Tiger Woods is back. Would you stop it? I'm just going by what they're saying. Yes, and what is that going to do to LeBron's legacy? I mean, that's <laughs> about what you're asking right now. <laughs> well, no, LeBron's playing every day. He's averaging nearly 30 a game. You know, I mean, Tiger, I, we don't see him. Tiger might as well be in the witness protection program for how infrequently we see him. I'd like to see Tiger play four rounds of golf. That you would know, be something to me. You know, you keep saying that. He's back. Okay? How many did he play last year at Augusta, walking all those hills with the back and the ankle and everything that's wrong with him? Well, he's had trouble lately, Mark. He has. Okay. So, once again, you're sticking to those damn facts. All right? This was a hype segment, Mark, not a fact segment. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Visit Jason and Todd. At the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? 
That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. So I play this immaculate grid game every day, you know, right. right. Viking Steelers. I just went Josh Dobbs. <laughs> just, I just think that's funny. That's <laughs> I'm cracking myself up over here. Patrick Peterson, right? Uh, yeah. Steelers Ravens. Is there an obvious one? I feel like I'm missing something. Well, didn't the Steelers just sign Patrick Queen? Yeah, but it won't work unless they play the game. Gotcha. I feel like I do uh, Tuesdays after Monday Night Football. Got to bed about the same time. That's what you get for going out. That game hit zeros, the television was off, and I was walking to bed. Plus, it's, it was about a 20-minute drive. That's what I, yeah, and then you're. I listened to some post-game on Westwood One. Yeah, good one, Tiger. Rod Woodson, it's a good call. Get that, Trent? Rod Woodson? Rod Woodson. Got it. Cool. Only 18% of people picked that answer. David, you would love this game. You'd be really good at it. Oh, yeah, Paul, I'm not going to lie. I haven't slept probably more than two hours in the last. Really? Yeah. Last night was the parents' last night here, so I I went to the Cape, hung out, watched the title game with them. Oh, gotcha. So you didn't get home till like 1230. Well, I stayed there. So then I woke up early this morning at about four and came back over this way. So did you get your uh, grocery shopping in? Did you get your clothes shopping in? Yes, we went to the outlet malls yesterday. I got some new clothes. See? There you go. I got brand new shorts on. I got brand new shoes on right now. Wow. It's like the first day of school. You've been burning a hole in mom's pocket. She so wanted to do this. She did. She was insistent. Yep. Yep. Makes them happy. I just want to make sure that you're all set up for when we leave. (laughs) 
we there. also went to Costco like last week when they first got here. That set me up pretty good. Sure. They took a look around your apartment and they said, oh, we just, there's no food here. <laughs> you have to go grocery shopping. <laughs> you have to have something to eat. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, we're giving John Cal's buddy at Tyson Foods a decent amount of money right now. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> He's got to shell out, you know. Here we go. Welcome back to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. 22 minutes until David Sampson joins us live from Atlanta. I think the world tour has taken him to Atlanta. And he is joining us from there. He's been very busy since we last spoke. He did his first road show in Philly. Then he flew out to L.A., did the Rich Eisen show for a couple days, then back east. I think he did a show last night in Atlanta, or maybe it's tonight. I thought it was last night. Anyway, David Sampson will interrupt his world tour to join us coming up at the top of the hour. Bob Harrig, one hour from now, the Masters. You may have heard of it. It's taking place this week. Pat Kerwin will also join us. Right now it is time for... The Starting Five. Five stories you need to know. It's the Starting Five on Miller and Moulton. Here's number one. All hail UConn. The Huskies go back-to-back. First men's team to do that since the Gators in 06 and 07. UConn led by six at the half, pulled away in the second half. Never really headed in this one. 75 to 60. So they covered and it was an under. Tristan <clears throat> may have told you that yesterday if you paid we, attention on this show. We may have Miller and Moulton finally got one right concerning the tournament. Uh Tristan Newton, your most outstanding player. I have to admit, I disagree. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was terrific. 20 points, seven assists, five rebounds, uh, seven assists, no turnovers. I mean, he was terrific. Uh, Zach Eady averaged 30 a game in the tournament. Zach Eady at 37 last night. You can give the most outstanding player to someone on the losing team, can't you? Yes, you can. Not anymore, but there was a time when you could, David. I mean, Jerry West won it, and West Virginia didn't win the title. I mean, seriously, it, come on. Who was the best who was the best player on the floor last night? I mean, it was Zach Eady. I mean, Zach, he is he is a conundrum. I mean, it's not often, Mark, that a guy can be the two time defending, you know, player of the year in college basketball, lead his team to the national title game, score thirty seven points in the title game, and you come out of the game going, Yeah, he can't play in the NBA. No way. They'll, they'll they'll destroy him, but in college, <laughs> he's a dude, man. <laughs> uh, so Zach Eady at thirty seven, and the rest of Purdue had twenty three. It's really tough to win that way. It is. Uh, Hurley said after the game, "Well, that was our strategy. Twenty. We had the number for the rest of the guys at twenty, and we thought if Eady gets forty, they still can't win. Uh, three off." Um, the Big East has won seven titles since 2011. Four for UConn, two for Nova, and one for Louisville when they were still in the Big East. Uh, the Purdue bench had two more points than you did. And it doesn't matter who you are. They were outscored 13 to two. Hey, um, UConn's won 12 tournament games in a row. Do you know... What the closest game was during that stretch? Miami last year in the semis. They only beat Miami by 13. Do you know that only one Purdue player had assists in the game? Yeah, right. The guard who had 12 points also had eight assists. That's it. No one else had an assist 
on the Correct. team. Correct. That uh-huh. seems damn near impossible. <laughs> So I guess he was the only guy who passed the ball to Edie. Because you would think if you're the other guys, get the ball to Edie. There's a chance for an assist here. I mean, Edie did score 16 straight Purdue points at one point. I mean, he really was doing all he could. Um, the last two years of the tournament, UConn's average margin of victory is 22 points. This year, their closest game of the tournament was in the semis when Alabama managed to only lose by 14. Uh, apparently, Hurley was asked about the Kentucky job and said, quote, no way, unquote. Then he said, hey. talk to my wife. <laughs> right. You really should be talking to my wife. <laughs> so um, there you have it. Uh, Florida, we mentioned the Gators, the last team before UConn to go back to back. Uh, their leading scorer at 18 a game, Walter Clayton, declared for the draft yesterday, but did say, hey, if the info I get's not good, then I'm coming back to the Gators. There's nowhere else I'll play in college except Florida. But he did declare technically for the draft. The numbers are in, at least the preliminary numbers, for the women's title game. $18.7 million. The only sporting events in the last five years that have attracted bigger viewership. Football, the World Cup, and the Olympics. So all the other sports in the last five years have not attracted a bigger audience than South Carolina, Iowa did Sunday afternoon. And... Very quietly, the NAIA yesterday made some noise. They banned transgender athletes from competing in women's sports, and they did so by a unanimous vote. We'll see if the NCAA were to take up such a vote, and if so, how it would go. Baseball. The Yankees tied the best start in franchise history. Now listen, when the Charlotte Hornets... You know, when the Arizona Coyotes, you know, when they, you know, this is our best. No, we've never done this in franchise history. Uh, okay. But when the Yankees do something that they've never done better, you go, huh, wow. Yankees are 9-2. and two. They held the Marlins to two hits. Soto with another homer. He going to get paid. You are right, David. Uh, the Yes Network should just have a cash register sound every time he gets a base hit, home run, whatever the case may be. Yes. 7 nothing Yankees. They're 9-2. and two. Turn his number into a dollar sign. <laughs> uh, the Marlins are 1-10. The Angels beat the Rays 7-1. Trout with a homer and an RBI triple. Mets held off the Braves 8-7. Brandon Nimmo with two homers. Pirates are 9-2. and two. There's some show that told you they were going to be pretty good this year. They beat Detroit 7-4. The Reds with six in the fourth beat Milwaukee 10-8. Okay, the Cubs had an 8-0 lead in the sixth. The Cubs had won their last 261 games in a row when they had an eight-run lead. They managed to lose to the Padres 9-8, and San Diego didn't even have to bat in the bottom of the ninth. Man, that's a bad day at the office. Seven in the sixth, two in the eighth for San Diego in the 9-8 win. Otani with his third homer in five games for the Dodgers in the 4-2 win over the Twins. Phillies blew a 3-1 lead in the ninth, only to beat St. Louis 5-3 and 10. Astros split the four-game series with Texas, winning 10-5. Blue Jays won their home opener. Them and the Red Sox both started with 10-game road trips. Blue Jays went four and six. Red Sox went seven and three. Blue Jays had their home opener yesterday, beat Seattle five to two. Red Sox had their home opener today against the Orioles. And Cleveland's off to an eight and two start, and the White Sox are off to a one and nine start. Cleveland four nothing. Washington eight one over the Giants, and the Diamondbacks have lost five in a row. Colorado beat them seven five. 
Red Sox, Mark, did what certain franchises have done here recently. They find a young player, and 10 minutes into their career, they decide, yeah, this guy's going to be really good. Let's sign him to a long-term deal now, and he'll get more money earlier, but we'll save money over the length of the deal. The Red Sox signed Sedan Rafaela, who's played 38 games, most of them in center field, but they say he can also play shortstop. What is this guy, Mookie Betts? Oh, wait, they had him. I was anyway. going to say, when's he going to be a Dodger then? Yeah. So, well, not for another eight years, Mark, because uh, that's how long the Red Sox just signed him for. Hockey, two games last night. Pittsburgh picked up a valuable point in losing to Toronto in overtime 3-2. They're now tied with the Wings for the final playoff spot. Detroit does have a very valuable game in hand, however. Austin Matthews with his 65th goal of the season last night. No one's done that since Ovechkin in 08. And Vancouver beat Vegas 4-3 to three to increase their division lead to 5 over Edmonton. Meanwhile, Vegas 5 points up on St. Louis for the final playoff spot with 4 to play. Hey, remember we told you last week about the Coyotes and their new plan? They're going to... this. 95-acre parcel is coming up for bid at the end of June. They're going to buy it. They're going to make sure they win the auction. And then they're going to build an arena and a practice facility and a mall and the whole deal. Apparently, it's in like the extreme northern part of Phoenix. The reason that's important is that borders Scottsdale. The mayor of Scottsdale came out yesterday and said, uh, we're totally against this project. And we're not going to support them with infrastructure in any way. And they can't build what they want to build without us extending them water. And we're not going to do it because we barely have enough water for our citizens. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> the coyotes want to stay. No one in Arizona wants them to stay. Ah. Uh. NBA was an off day yesterday. Charlotte Hornets made some news, though. They interviewed Lindsey Harding for their head coaching job. She's the head coach of the G League team in Sacramento. She just won Coach of the Year honors. She played nine years in the WNBA. She's 39 years old. We've talked about this for a while now. When will it happen? When will a woman be the manager slash head coach of a major league men's team hasn't happened yet obviously kim ang gm of the marlins for the past few years led him to the playoffs they offered to demote her she quit uh trey young cleared for practice there's like a week or so left in the season but the hawks will play the bulls in the play-in and so maybe trey young in a week and a half will be ready for that uh, and the Masters gets underway Thursday. Uh, all sorts of rumors about how good Tiger Woods looks walking and hitting the ball Sunday and Monday at Augusta. Just saying. And this is coming from people who are playing practice rounds with him or following him on the course. Uh, John Rahm, by the way, the day before his champion's dinner, he came out and said uh, there's plenty of room for both the PJ Tour and the LIV. And the LIV does have to make some changes, though, including they got to start playing 72 holes. All right. And he said, and I've told them that privately, so they're not hearing anything new. What are they going to change the name of the tour to? See, the whole LIV is 50. No, I got it. I, I just, does it become LXX11? Pronounce it. Lexi. No. And at nine minutes before the hour, that was. That was the starting five every weekday morning at this time on Miller and Moulton. And as Paul pointed out in our Twitch chat room, no NFL in the starting five. Uh, nothing. Uh, they were just doing working on the draft boards yesterday. They didn't do a damn thing. So I don't know what we're going to talk to Pat Kerwin about, except the draft's in two and a half weeks. I don't know. Seems as if it might interest a few of you. I mean, Mark and I are doing research projects, for goodness sakes, on this thing. That's how big it is. 
I mean, we were comparing how many pages of your notes. No, oh, I, I got this front and back, double space. And then Trent jumped in and said, really? You guys all over me about my notes for the final four in March Madness, and you two are doing draft notes for a Twitch show. You're damn right we are, Trent. You're damn right we are. Yep. And the difference is you guys are actually going to be correct when you say Caleb Williams goes number one overall, whereas I picked Auburn to cut down the nets. Uh, Mark, meanwhile, to his credit, had UConn beating Purdue for the national title. And in a pool with over 100 entries, I finished second and cashed a ticket. Nice. Huh. With the uh, top 16 seeds all advancing to the Sweet 16. And then I don't you care how it works out. I got paid. <laughs> Mark, okay. likes Mark likes to win. <laughs> Listen, as opposed to me, who entered the ESPN contest and finished in 19%. Right. I was in the bottom 20%. I think I'm relegated. I don't know. if I think I'm going to get an email that says you're not allowed to participate next year. That's how That's how much you suck, Moulton. You're going to have to do the Division Two bracket. I think so. I, I, you know what? I deserve that. I do. David Sampson. He's a high major, and he's next. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music 7 days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You are listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Good morning, Good. David. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Yourself? Excellent. You look tired. You look like you I just did you, did you did you have your show last night or did you just I, do have a workout? I had a show last night uh, and a show yesterday morning, several, and now I'm doing this, my show, and then jumping on a plane to Boston for another show. Tonight? Uh, it's tomorrow night, thank God. And I went out with groupies to like three in the morning. 
Oh boy. How was Atlanta till three in the morning? It was my first time with groupies and I thought it was outstanding actually. <laughs> Wait, are we on the air? We're on Twitch. Hello, Twitch. I'm just so, kidding. So, um, just so you know, when you come to Southwest Florida, whenever that time is, and we go out afterwards with our groupies, okay, remember, it's Southwest Florida. We'll be lucky to hit midnight. Uh, we'll be lucky you to hit 9 p.m. What are you uh, talking you, about? Come on, you've got this. How it's are the a different going feeling. So it's they're good. It's we released the Philly one in the feed and on YouTube, and the numbers were fantastic. Uh, doing it in front of a live audience is a different thing. So Philadelphia was very Philadelphia based, and last night was very Atlanta centric. Uh, I was here for the 50th anniversary of the Hank Aaron home run, right? Which was just luck. So I was able to do you know 20 minutes on that. Dan Ugla came on stage which was fun. And uh, Juju Gotti came on stage, which was fun from the Levitar was show. one of your favorites, wasn't he? Yes. He and I are still very close. And so it was really a fun conversation for the audience and for the entire pod audience that they'll hear it. It was a good conversation. I liked him as a player a lot. He had five years of a five year run of. Yes. Greatness. He had like, uh, you know, poor man's Jeff Kent five years. I mean, they were really good. He had, especially in the ballpark he was playing in. He had a real Jeff Kent five years, but yeah. the reason why it's not Jeff Kent is it was five years. Right. He killed the Mets. I know that. Killed yes, the Mets. Did. We talked about it. He has the last home run ever at Shea Stadium. Oh, yeah. You guys at 08. We shut it down in 08. Yep. God, what did happened? we have fun that night. Oof. The Mets did a whole celebration that night to celebrate the end of Shea, and everybody was there. Yep, all of the oh, former yeah, well, stars and the Mets were despondent. Sure, they were. They got they were woke up that morning tied for first in the East. You guys went pounded to bed them out of the playoffs. That was Glavin's last start in the majors, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about. Uh, very well, could have been. I think it was, and it was 08, right? And he, yeah, and he got crushed in the first yep, inning, first and then Trey the Willis first. gave it up too. I don't. I don't think Glavin pitched again. Wow, I did I, not know that. I, look it up. Uh, I'll look it up. I think Glavin kind of went out like Marino in Jacksonville. Wow. Okay, that gives it I even think. more context. And Glavin, who still lives in Atlanta, I see Glavin. It's itch. I've run into Glavin a few times at the airport. He's flying out of Atlanta to go somewhere. Wow. <clears> He's <throat> just sitting Hall in the airport. Career. Nobody's talking to him. Well, you can blend in much easier if you're Tom Glavin than if you're Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Got that right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Look alive, everybody. You are listening to Miller and Moulton, exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. He interrupts his world tour to do his weekly appearance on Miller Moulton. He's David Sampson. You can follow him on X at David, the letter P, Sampson. He is the host. He is the star of Nothing Personal with David Sampson, and he is out on tour doing shows before a live studio audience last night in Atlanta, which is where he joins us from this morning. How's the tour going? How are the t-shirt sales? So the tour is fun. It's that I'm, it's like playing a night game and a morning game every day because I do my regular show at 8 a.m. live every morning. And then I do shows at night from 7.30 to 9. So two a days have been a little tough on the throat, a little tough on the exhaustion and uh, trying to work in a run now and then trying to work out going out for a drink or two now and then depending on who's at the show. So it's challenging, but boy, is it fun. 
and you don't sleep, like you don't take a nap, like you won't do your show this morning and like a ball player take that afternoon nap. I mean, that was as, as a hockey announcer, I lived for the afternoon nap when I was on the road. You don't seem to ever sleep, David. So it's funny you mentioned that. So the answer so far has been no. I'm getting on a plane after my show this morning to fly to Boston for a show. And I hope I fall asleep on the plane because that's as close as I'll get. But no, I'm not a nap. But life on the road, as a baseball executive, I didn't have morning shows. So I didn't have the need to nap. I didn't sleep a lot, but I didn't. It's different when you don't have to wake up for anything and you wake up early versus when you have to wake up to do a show and you wake up early. So this whole new schedule I have this month, we'll see what happens. Listen, we only have you for 12 minutes a week, so we want to cover some ground. But very quickly, what have you found is the difference between doing your normal show into a microphone in which you don't know if three people or 30,000 are watching versus when you do it in front of a live audience? So I, I treat it the same. When I first started the show, there were probably two people watching and two people downloading four years ago. And now it's built into this big show. So I, I, I'm so thankful to whoever comes and I try to be personal with the audience and get a rapport with the audience, but also knowing the overwhelming majority of people will be watching and listening, not there. So I try to take care of both audiences and uh, I find that tightrope act fun to, fun to walk. Find yourself going long. Are you Bruce or are you, are you Springsteen doing three hour shows or there's a singer for the Smiths, Morrissey who spent, you know, cost a ton for a ticket, gave about a 55 minute show and called it a night. What's David Sampson. I'm exactly as scheduled. I go on at seven 32 and I go off at 9 PM. So I don't make people wait like Madonna. The show is 7.30 to 9. I start at 7.32 and I finish on time at 9. And you figured out how to do your encores, you know, make them look spontaneous when in fact they're scripted. Have you got that figured out yet? So I have some cards. I don't have a prompter, obviously. <laughs> okay. So I have some cards to help me get back on track. And we had a lot of topics to cover. The sports world right now yes. is just full of stories. So it's All right. easy to well do. We'll start with baseball, the pitching and the injuries, lots of talk in the last week. Uh, why is all of these pitchers now breaking down at a rate we've never seen before? Curious your thoughts on that. Well, my thoughts are that we all need better PR because what you just said, I don't believe you have any statistical backing for when you said pitchers are breaking down at a rate never seen before. Yes, we have Tommy Johns. But do we have way more this year than we've had in previous years? If so, why? It feels like it because of recency bias and the types of names who are getting it. But we've been worried about Tommy Johns for 20 years in baseball and worried about pitcher injuries. And the reason why we feel like they're getting worse is that pitchers are having them multiple times now, which is a big concern. We're in another scale of Tommy Johns, so Spencer Strider. Garrett Cole, you're looking at, at players who are having injuries. Garrett Cole hasn't announced his Tommy John yet. But really, can we talk about what's happening? And that's the labor situation. The reason why you've got the union saying it's the pitch clock and the owners saying it's velocity and spin rate, and then players specifically saying, hey, it's probably a little bit of both. They're going off script. The union wants the players to be all about the pitch clock because they are taking a position for the next collective bargaining agreement. You want the owners all saying, hey, it's not pitch clock at all. We're allowed to both change the rules and do whatever we want on the competition committee. So it's like two sides are digging their heels in when they don't realize that working together is what is going to be required because the way we're treating pitchers is the way I used to, which is give me every bullet you have. If you get hurt, next man up. And at the end of the day, as team president, I understand why I did it. As someone who's out of the game now, I can see why it is not the best for the product. Do you have a solution? I mean, or do we? Do you have an idea as to why? I mean, because obviously both can be true, that the pitch clock and the spin rates are there. I mean, they're bigger, faster, stronger, but do you have a solution? I do. And, and my solution is the same as when MLB wanted to cut out strikeouts and they wanted to stop people from just caring about hitting home runs. And my solution did not get enough votes, but I think it's going to come up again. And my solution was how we pay players. Offensive players in arbitration do not get any demerit for striking out. They get 
merit increases for home runs. Therefore, you are going to try to hit home runs. For pitchers, we have a system where in arbitration, strikeouts, the strikeouts that they throw, they get paid for that. They don't get paid really for early contact. Earned run average is not as important a stat anymore when it comes to arbitration. Bulk is bulk matters, but it's not really a thing where if you were a bullpen arm, you didn't get paid in arbitration. It's changed now where if you're throwing 100 and you're striking out nine, nine Ks per nine innings or more than that, you're going to get paid. So my solution is we start paying for length. Starters start getting paid. Had someone at my door. Starters start, sorry about that, we're live. Starters start getting paid more for doing things that we want them to do to protect their arm, where it's not about throwing 100. Maybe you pay more for 94, 96 than you do for 100. We have to look at how players get paid because like anyone in sales, they go to where the money is. Would Greg Maddox be a top prospect today? It would. Tom, no. We were talking before the show about Tom Glavin. Would Tom Glavin even be drafted today in a 20-round draft, if you know what I mean? Is that where baseball needs to look at itself? Because Maddox, when he was young, topped out at 95. And he was at his best when he was throwing between 89 and 92. Okay, and I'm just curious, would Greg Maddox be a viable prospect today? So he would barely get drafted, and if drafted, he would have to prove to be just a winner the way he ended up being. So I think a pitcher like Red Maddox, you're talking about a Hall of Famer, he would find his way to a Hall of Fame career because of him but and his brain and his just pitchability is what we called it, not his stuff. It has really become a stuff game. You show stuff, you get chances. You don't show stuff, you don't get chances. But and Maddox think, was stuff. But the body, despite us being bigger and stronger and better trained, the body is base. It seems, David, as if the the body and the elbow and the pitching arms are basically saying, "Listen, you can't throw max." all the time for this long and expect us to not break down. It's kind of like in football. Why do we have all these torn pectoral muscles and what have you? We never had this in the 70s and 80s. Well, you're bigger, stronger, and more tightly wound now. So that's the thing we talk to our players about. There's such a difference in what the players want in their weight rooms now. They want professional-style weight rooms. They want to look good in the uniforms that they hate. They feel as though strength is what gives them power. It's what gives them velocity or distance and launch velocity or pitching velocity. And you're right. We used to have guys who after the game, instead of lifting weights, they'd have 12 beers. And Ozzy Gein gave a great interview and said, you can't pull a fat muscle. Guys didn't used to pull muscles all the time when they were out getting hammered till two in the morning. I miss those days and I totally understand it. So we have to decide what kind of game we want. And that's what the commissioner does. He sits there with the owners and says, listen, are you okay paying these guys not to play? Selig used to say it, and we'd say, we'll live with it. Now Manford says it, and the owners are a little different now because they can react one of two ways. Stop giving long-term deals. That's one way where the injuries are fine. Or if you're going to give long-term deals, then you better change how we treat these athletes. You know, we don't know many officials, umpires, referees by name, but we do know Angel Hernandez by name. How long is this sport going to allow this guy to make the sport look so bad? You know, they're trying, but he's protected by the union and, you know, he sued baseball. And for me, the minute you sue your employer, that should be the end of your job. I thought the same thing about Brian Flores as I do about Angel Hernandez, as I do about anybody who sues your employer. Uh, You're allowed to. And in our country, I think it's fine to do it. But I don't think you can expect that you will keep your job. And that seems normal. If you sued your station, I'm not sure that you'd have the microphone every morning the way you do. So I think that uh, <laughs> it's a bit of an well, issue David, right now. David, listen, we all get unions, but you know, it, I know it's really difficult, but you can eventually get rid of a bad teacher. Okay. I mean, the players with can tenure? be gotten rid of. Wait a minute, David, with tenure? Yeah, to get rid of a bad teacher. It's, I'm not tenure. saying it's easy, but I mean, come on, you guys, you guys in this sport have had 30 years to get rid of Angel Hernandez. Seriously, I mean, you're basically saying it's the only job for life in baseball is becoming an umpire. It's a bit like being a Supreme Court justice. There is no question about that. And uh, however, 
it still doesn't mean you can commit fraud. It still doesn't mean that you can purposely ruin cases or not have legal basis for decisions that you make. So obviously Angel is rated. And if they had low enough ratings, uh, they would paper the file more than they do and try to find a way out. As it is, they don't give him postseason assignments because he doesn't rate well enough. But there's plenty of umpires who don't get postseason assignments. Mind-boggling that the union would it still is. want him in. Oh, well, that's I mean, a great one. Unions fight for everybody. That's I, why they I call themselves that unions. But they are they're diminishing their worth to the rest of their members. At some point, the other membership has to step up and say, hey, enough. I mean, listen, the non-cheaters finally stood up and said, we have to do steroid testing 20 years ago. They did. They said, listen, uh, sorry, can't protect you all. You're we got to have drug testing. Yes, and but they gave him a chance to stop. Remember the Mitchell report, anyone mentioned in the Mitchell report, there were no punishments at all. It's sort of like the Astros garbage can. Tell us what happened. We won't punish you. <laughs> we don't need to hear what happened to Angel. We know he's just bad. He's awful. All right, he's David Sampson. Nothing personal with David Sampson. He's taking his act on the road. Last night, Atlanta. Tomorrow, Boston. He records Nothing Personal with David Sampson live weekdays at 8 a.m. Check it out. But don't stop watching your show because you can watch me on DraftKings Network at 10 a.m. So you can do both. Your audience can do both now. You're off at 10, right? That's yes. right. So I want everyone to watch your show and then my show. Look at that. Such a nice guy. It's because he's paid so much. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps. Have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. kind of loud in the building this morning there's a lot going on really yeah any screaming and yelling anything good no no just commotion doors open and closing i hear people talking is raj across the hall no raj only works afternoons now oh okay really oh my goodness that fits his lifestyle perfectly yeah he was in the other day because they had a radio-a-thon for the galasano children's hospital and oh yeah he was running the board for B. Do you know what's weird? That they asked us like six months ago, would we be part of that? Why didn't we say yes? We did say yes. Like, would we do our show from it? And I said, yeah. 
I, I said, you, you know, get, let us know. I got to come down. But, you know, yeah, sure. I, the one thing I did say, though, is I said, we have to get paid a remote fee. Oh, they weren't going to do that. Okay. I don't think they paid anybody to do that. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, they don't, we're not employees of theirs. So in order for them to get us to. But, you know, I talked to the sales manager there and I said, you know. you're trying to help this out i said it's certainly worth the cause and i even joked with them i said with how we get paid for stuff like that i said it'll take months for you guys to have to shell out that money it'll take us months just to send you an invoice um yeah got an email that he hasn't been sending invoices i'm so bent So, David, how was the eclipse party? Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, stop. We're, no, not, I don't want to hear any of it until we get back on the air. If you don't mind. <laughs> if you do mind, then you can do it during the Twitch break and we won't come up with it. Oh, that's fine. Because I wanted to talk eclipse, and this is really the only segment we've got to do it okay. for the rest of the show. So there you go. I thought you were going to say you don't want to hear another damn thing about the eclipse. No, no, I walked outside with my eclipse glasses and looked at the sun. Where did you get your eclipse glasses? I don't know. My wife brought them home. Oh, yeah, that's right. Neat. I saw a joke on X, and it was like, at the sunglass shop, they'll tell you that you got to spend $125 for polarized lenses, and then when the eclipse comes, you can wear these paper things for $3 and stare directly at the sun. Correct. You know? <laughs> it's just like... That's how twisted it is. Twisted it is. Reed Shepard should not go pro, but I think he will. Ellie Davis. Pittsburgh scored with like four minutes left last night to force OT too. Mm -hmm. I had that on. It's a valuable. Uh... The big point. If they make the playoffs, it's going to be that game in New Jersey. That was the springboard when they scored five in the third and the three goals in 50-something seconds. Come on, your guys' wings, huh? Here we go. I know. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 21 minutes past the hour. Bob Herrick will join us coming up a little more than 15 minutes' time. He's written the book about Tiger. We had him on a couple of weeks ago to help him to promote that. Now, he's going to cover Tiger winning his sixth Masters. What are you trying to do? Uh, hey, uh, I'm just listening. You are driving the hype train. Listen, I'm just a passenger alongside. I'm listening to the people who are at Augusta, who are walking the course with them, who are playing practice rounds with them. And apparently he hasn't looked this good in forever. Well, Michael Collins is one. 
And he's never said a bad word about Tiger in his life. He thinks Tiger's going to win every tournament he plays in, given any opportunity. Nah, it's a little bit of an overstatement, but okay. All right. How about Will Zalatoris? Who idolizes Tiger Woods. Well, most of them do, and if they don't, they're thankful as hell for how much money they're playing for. And he played nine holes with him. Let's look at, I, I want to see Tiger play 18 holes three days in a row on that course. Okay. Love to see four. All right. Anyway, uh, Bob Herrig right. coming up in, in about 15 minutes to talk about Tiger on his way to tying Jack and winning his uh, sixth. Pat Kerwin at the top of the hour. Big day yesterday. Ha! <laughs> Big day. And not just because UConn went back to back. No, we had an eclipse. Damn right we did. And you know what? Let's party. As a nation, let's party. Uh, Whatever. It's like Groundhog Day. I don't don't know. You you see Shadow. Hey! People were Uh, losing their minds. Yes, they were. Uh, Just people drove uh, the... Thousands of miles camped out for four days. It just, I, we are, I'll tell you what, this country is something. It really is. Okay. I mean, if you, if, if a great screenwriter were to sit down and write, okay, how we are right now and make a movie, Hollywood would reject it and go, you got to be kidding me. There's no country in the world like that. People are going to drive 2,000 miles, camp out for four days for an eclipse. Where? America? No way. Yep. Can we get to Arkansas in time? <sighs> so um, I have to admit, I didn't think it was possible because my granddaughter is getting all of my money anyway. But I think I love her more. She wanted nothing to do with the eclipse and the eclipse party. Oh, my God, do I love her. All right. I don't know if someone can be your grandchild, if you know what I mean. Like, they act like you. But, man, I watched it on full display. I'm like, that's my grandkid right there. She was knocking on the door to get back in the school. Like, let's go back to class. Where? No, this sucks. I Where mean, are the snacks? Totally. She's like, I want to get back in my class. I want to sit in the circle. I want to do my, this. She was. She's banging on the door to get back in school. Let me in. This is ridiculous. Okay. They hand her the glasses. She hands them back. Like, what the hell you want me to do with these? Seriously, I, honestly, her sock went up. I didn't think it was possible. Did you put the glasses on? No. First Why not? Off, you didn't put the glasses on and look up at the sun and see the moon. There, You're not supposed to look at it first directly. First off, let me tell you, at 3.05 yesterday, which was peak, apparently it's the end of the right. world is happening. No, All it right. was an eclipse. It, bright sunshine. Bright sunshine. I'm like, where's this eclipse? Where, uh, seriously, the sky was lit up. I thought I was in. We weren't in the path. We were nowhere near the this path. This is why people were driving this is, across This is the why country. you went to the middle. No, 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 Nate. No, no, David. Stop it. We were not in the path. You had to go somewhere that was in. You could see a partial eclipse if you had the glasses on. That was the whole point of the damn thing. That's why you wore the damn glasses. We were supposed to be 64% of the damn eclipse is what we were supposed to get in Jacksonville, Okay. 64 damn percent. I don't know. You guys were like 58% or something, but nothing. Zip, zilch, nada. There was no darkness in the sky. Nothing. Of bright course sunshine. not. David, it was, it like, was like, it was like a partial. I mean, if you look, if you put partial, the on, there was nothing. It was, it didn't look, exist. It's like Phil seeing a shadow. It's BS. It didn't happen. No, it, it actually did happen. Oh. Believe it or not, the sun is bright enough to where even if half of it or 40% of it or whatever is covered, you won't notice. Thank you, Bill Nye over here. <laughs> I'm glad we could teach a little bit on this show. If you looked at it, you could you could see that there was a section of it, a chunk of it that was covered, and it was kind of cool. I'm, and I'm, I'm upset that you missed it. <laughs> I want back in my classroom. I wanted my snacks. I want to be with my friends. 
it was crap, I tell you. It was crap. That Punxsutawney Phil, crap. This is just your resentment of weather people because of all the time they took away from your sports broadcast over the year. When you first started doing sports, you had, what, three and a half, four minutes to do your sports. By the four, time you were done, four and a half. by the time okay. you were done, it was 2.30, 2.45, get this sucker done with nobody cares. And you know why? Because we've got to get more weather. This is just deep down, you have a resentment towards the weather people of this world. And now time for one final look at the weather. Jim? Yeah, we, weather, we have a weatherman who listens and watches the show almost daily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I've told him he sucks <laughs> to his face. In fact, okay, yeah, you need more time. Like you're that interesting. Give me a break. Mostly sunny, high of eighty-eight, lows in the sixties. No, wow. no, 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 no. An eclipse. Yeah. Okay, and you may see it, and you may not. And by the way, not good for you, for you to look at it. But we're going to spend two weeks hyping it up, and apparently it's going to last for two hours. Now, I did see evidence of it. There were certain parts of the country. It's like, oh, wow, it looks like the world's coming to an end. But it was not in Florida. So I want back in my classroom with my friends and my snacks. I'm, I'm with my granddaughter. This is crap, I tell you. Unbelievable. I love her so. You are the Grinch of eclipses. I had an open mind, and then when the... You, 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 have, you like didn't, didn't have an open mind. I did. I'm like, did show you, me some darkness. Did you put the glasses on? No. David, you never gave this a chance. You told us yesterday that you were dreading going to this. And you're only going to it so that your daughter knows that you still love them. And right. the whole, you had you, no interest. This was all out of guilt. Well, I had no interest in the party, but I was curious if all of a sudden <laughs> it was going to look like the world was coming to an end. Okay, that would interest me. All right, you and got you me. should have gone to Cleveland. You've got me at Armageddon. You got me. No, nothing. Miller and Moulton, time now for our Molly made play of the day. Trent, what do you have for us? A champion was crowned last night, so there's low-hanging fruit, but uh, we're going to go to baseball. Uh, Reds hosting the Brewers. Dare I say the most electric man in baseball? Certainly one of. Ellie De La Cruz steps to the plate in the seventh inning, jumps on the first pitch, puts it in center field, and then absolutely flies around the bases. Ellie De La Cruz is on his horse. And they are waving him to the house. Here he comes. The throw to the plate. And it is. It is an inside the park home run for Ellie De La Cruz. You knew it was coming. And you knew it would be him. And he just did it. 10-8 Reds. 10-8 Reds. And that would be the final. Reds win it. Ellie De La Cruz rounded the bases. He's fun to watch, guys. He really is. Less than 15 seconds. He had inside the park home run. That was Jeff Brantley. On the Reds radio network. I know you're mad at me. Just do the damn read, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's brought to you by Molly Maid. Clean up your house after the eclipse. 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839. Tell them David Moulton and the eclipse sent you. All right, that's it with sports. Now, one final look at the weather, Mark. Take it away. Bob Bob Herrick next. next. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymaid.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymaid.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung has successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida for over 30 years. As a former prosecutor, the information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, a criminal matter, or involved in an auto accident, call the law firm of Michael F. Horna. I'm a local attorney with local knowledge to assist you through the process. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Offices in Florida. Visit Jason and Todd. 
at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. I listen, I did not have an open mind about this party. I did not understand why we were having an eclipse party for two to four year olds. I didn't understand it at all, but I had an open mind about the eclipse. Yeah, it sounded like it. Well, it, it, it didn't deliver. I'm sorry. I don't know what to it tell wasn't you. It's supposed to deliver here. I gave it a chance. I gave it a two hour chance. It was no, kind of like a movie. You gave it no chance. I gave it a chance for two hours. It you put sucked. the glasses on and look at the sun. I just, I had my sunglasses on. Okay, I did look at it through my sunglasses. I saw a bupkis. Because you, okay. Listen, there's no darkness. The sky didn't change. It then wasn't give me no. supposed to change a little bit. No, it wasn't. You block out sixty four percent of the sun. The it sky's not supposed to change. No. I don't know. I felt like I gave the movie a chance. You went to the like wrong it. theater if you wanted maybe, to give it a chance. You're only off you by a few hundred miles. Maybe I did. You know what? I'll I'll go I'll go see it again uh, next time. I'm like that uh, eight year old that Gigi Spear interviewed on the street. You're going to watch Caitlin Clark in the WNBA? Maybe. My mother likes our younger guests that we're bringing on the show. Coming up, Bob Harrigan, Pat Kerwin. <laughs> Appealing to our younger demos. Hey, we're talking Tiger in the NFL. We can't talk about two things that appeal to our younger demos more. Empire. There's nonsense happening in our country right now, Empire. What? We are a well-run machine. We have 21 years we have to wait for another one of these suckers? 21 years. Wow, that's a good one. You, will I that that gets me close to 80. Will I live to see the next eclipse? I'll oh, tell you what, we'll do a Twitch show for both. Still- <laughs> we sure will. 79 and 75. Trent will be about 160 pounds by then. No, he won't. He'll put on a lot of weight. Trust me, I just saw his dad. His dad's skinnier than he is. Paul, you know, it's a great We don't have a poll question. It's going to be 21 years to the next eclipse. Will Miller and Moulton live to see it? A, yes, Miller. B, yes, Moulton. C, yes to both. D, no to both. 
It's a tough poll question right there. Oh, there's another one in Europe in two years. I'll have to go. That should be our poll question, actually. Will Tiger make the cut? We we offer you Scheffler of the field. How about that for the mass, uh, poll question? Field trip to Europe. All right, Bob is on, and here we go. Welcome back to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. 22 minutes till the top of the hour. Pat Kerwin will join us then. Isaac Shade will join us one hour from now to talk about UConn going back to back and who's going to take the Kentucky job. But Bob Harrig is kind enough to join us once again. He does so from Augusta, author of Drive, The Lasting Legacy of Tiger Woods. He also covers golf for Sports Illustrated. Follow Bob on X at Bob Harrig, H-A-R-I-G. Bob, you're going to have to amend the book already because from what I'm hearing, Tiger is winning the Masters. This book's going to need a new chapter like soon. <laughs> if that were to happen, I'd be glad to tear it up and go, go get all these and, 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 re and redo it. That would be fine with me. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to see, to, to, to have to scramble to, to write another addendum or what have you, if that happens. Uh, I'm not so sure that's going to happen, but, uh, you know, it's Tuesday and, and, uh, that's a day, a day for optimism. Well, there's no doubt the hype train has started, but for me, it's all about, and I think for you and for, and for David as well, it's about Scotty Scheffler. He's playing better than anybody out there. And we haven't seen anything like this since Tiger was playing his best golf. How good is Scotty Scheffler right now? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's the consistency level over the last 18 months is remarkable. Um, you know, you can make the argument. There should be a few more wins in there as, as, as many times as he's contended and as great as he's hit the ball. As everybody knows, the putting is, is a little bit of, a, of an issue. And he found something here going into the, into the Arnold Palmer. He, you know, he switched putters, went to like a mallet putter, took the line off the golf ball, which um, he said freed him up to not worry so much about the roll uh, and won two tournaments. You know, and he won the Players' Championship not even feeling great. He had a neck problem, neck injury that his caddy said he, he didn't even hit the ball that well. Yet he hit it pretty, pretty darn well anyway. Uh, and then, you know, in Houston two weeks ago, he, he missed a putt on, on 18 that would have put him in a playoff. Uh, you know, I, I, it certainly wasn't a gimme, but it was makeable. And, uh, you know, so he's had two wins in a close call second, plus, you know, a lot of other high finishes. And he's won here. He won here two years ago. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of things align for him at the moment. Bob, let's just say it's like the players. It's a full field, you know, the best field that they can put together on tour, okay, or the Masters. Which event do you think Scheffler has a better chance of winning or a worse chance, if you know what I mean? Like, are there more golfers at Augusta with a realistic shot to beat Scheffler, or are there actually less? I actually think there's less. I mean, you know, there's probably 100 guys who could win the players. There's not even 100 guys in this field. Um, I mean, and like, you know, maybe I'm exaggerating a little on the players. I mean, you know, I mean, let's be honest. There's, there's 65, 70 some odd players who make the cut in theory, any of those guys who could make, could win the players championship, uh, here, you know, with all the past champions and amateurs that are in the field, it's 89. There's probably really only 50 guys that can win. So yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, look, 
Kepka, you know, he got criticized for it because it was so brash when he talked about, you know, I actually think that I'm in a great spot to win the majors because because so many guys rule themselves out. You know, uh, like in other words, the pressure and the, and the and the and the moment is too much. And you know, there's something to that probably. So when you think of it that way, there's even fewer guys that you have to beat. And obviously, Kepka and Rom and a couple of the live players are up high on the odds sheet for this tournament. This is just obviously, and we know this, but it's it's past experience here is everything. And for a guy like Kepka, what's going to be the missing link for him to get this green jacket? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, I think he's got to find his game. He shot 77-77 over the weekend at Doral. Now, I don't know what the deal was there. You know, some guys got sick. Um, uh, you know, Cam Smith withdrew with an illness. A couple caddies were ill. Um, so I was wondering, like, was he not feeling well? Because he played fine on Friday, and I watched. I actually was there for a couple of days. I watched him during the pro am. He looked great. You know, I was sitting there thinking, "Wow, he's 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 gearing up for next week, meaning the Masters." And then he shoots five over par, ten over par on the weekend, five over each day. So, but you know, Brooks is a guy who really focuses on these big tournaments. I mean, that, that's you know, he's won five majors, and 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 most people can't even can't even name the other tournaments that he's won. It's not a, it's not a big number. Uh, he's won, obviously he's won a few times on live now as well, but, um, I got to believe if he's healthy and, and things are fine, you know, he's highly motivated to win here. He felt like he let last year get away, you know, that, that changeover on Sunday morning, those last holes, and then going out, you know, he went a long stretch without making a birdie and he had a four shot lead when play ended Saturday and it was two shots before the final round. And basically, you know, early in the in the round, he was already behind, and he, he didn't make a birdie until the thirteenth hole. He was he was mad at himself, and and of course, he came right back and won the next major. So, uh, I think it's be interesting to see how how he looks and what what he's got going on. You know, there's some talk, even though Kepka proved it wrong last year, but you know, the talks that since the LIV tour is so casual, shorts, only 54 holes, far less events, that are the guys really mentally and physically, are they sharp enough for the majors when you go from playing LIV to now the major season? Like Rom, you know, he's been okay, he's been pretty good. But he hasn't been great so far this year. I mean, does John Rom think he's sharp enough to win? It's a good question. I mean, I he got asked that last week in Miami, and he felt he was playing as well as or better than he was last year at this time. You know, he had a little bit of a lull before the Masters last year. He he had a poor Bay Hill, and he withdrew from uh, the players with illness, and 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 then he didn't have a great match play, which was played last year, and, and after that he. He came in here a little, maybe a little under the radar, as hard as that is to believe. And yet he feels he's playing better now than he did than he was last year. So the question as to whether or not these guys are prepared well enough, I think is, is still is still out there. I think last year sort of proved that it's maybe a bit misguided in that, you know, these guys are pros, you know, and and, and even if they're not playing tournaments as much as they were before, it's on them to get ready. You know, now last year, they only played three live events before the Masters. This year, they played five. Uh, you know, so I, I got to believe, too, that that helped. You know, two of them were around the time of the Florida swing and then one last week. Is that the ideal schedule? I mean, I think, truth be told, a lot of these guys would prefer not to play the week before, um, which obviously in live, you're required to play their schedule. But, um, you know, uh, I know a bunch of these, those guys got up here last week before they went to Miami, which made some sense. They had an extra day, you know, so they could take advantage of coming here at, at, and not, and not uh, you, know, not in, 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 not, you know, not interfering with their tournament prep. You know, Roy came up here, too, before he went to San Antonio. So um, it's going to be interesting. You know, I think that's. That's the dynamic for Liv. I think it, it impacts them later in the year a little bit more. They surround the majors with tournaments. Um, you know, they're playing the week before the PGA. They're playing the week before the U.S. Open. Of course, so is the Tour. The Tour is now playing the week before those tournaments. Uh, the signature events, I mean. They're playing big events those weeks. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that all, how that all shakes out. 
Rory McIlroy, what can we expect from him this week? Obviously, it's all about this tournament for him. He's played well in regular events. He's played well in the majors. He's played well in the Ryder Cup. What does he have to do to get a green jacket this week? I think, first off, he's got to get off to a good start. He's, he, he finds himself behind. And like last year, you know, the leaders were shot 65 and he, he shot 74. You know, you're, you're, you're already seven, eight, nine shots back when you're teeing off on Friday. And now you're trying, trying to catch up. And Roy's skilled enough and he's got enough of confidence that he feels that he can start firing at flags, which then you make it worse. You know, you got to take what it gives you at, at Augusta. you got to hit a lot of greens. You don't want to be missing greens. And sometimes that means hitting it in the middle and taking a 20-footer. And then you take your chances when you get them. It would be really good for Roy to shoot around 70, 69. He doesn't need to lead. He just needs to be within striking distance, you know. And obviously there's, there's um, you know, the weather is an impact as well. Like we don't know how, his tee times yet. We don't know the tee times. He's, um, you know, there's some rain in the forecast for, for Thursday. It's supposed to be in the morning. So how does that impact things? Then it's supposed to get a bit windy in the afternoon. So is it easier or harder after it rains? I mean, so much is going to be dependent on when these guys play. But if everything were just the same, I think you just want Roy to get off to a decent start. You know, shoot 69, shoot 68, you're in it. You know, and then you have another one, and then you're there for the weekend. You know, the Masters doesn't see a lot of big 36-hole comebacks, and it really rewards guys who hit greens. If you look, almost all. It's assuredly the, the guys who lead in greens and regulation, one, two, three, are winning the tournament. Bob Harrod covers golf for Sports Illustrated. He has authored Drive, The Lasting Legacy of Tiger Woods. It is out, has been for a couple weeks. Make a great Father's or Mother's Day gift for the golfer in your life. Hey, you know you call Florida home. We've had a cooler, wetter winter you know, heading into spring than most years. And Georgia got similar weather. How does that affect the course? I'm told it's in as good a condition as it's ever been in. Does it make it softer, less fast, or is it hard, firm, and faster? Well, it's been firm and fast. The, the, you know, the weather's been terrific. It's been sunny. It's been relatively warm. I, I got here Saturday for the women's event, which was terrific, by the way. Um, we got a little bit of rain this morning. I don't think it's going to do anything. Um, I, the, the, most of the feedback has been that the course is firm and fast. And that's, of course, what we'd like. It's been, it's been very wet the last few years. I don't think they've had a huge amount of rain here lately. And so I think, you know, it, it, they could get it the way they would like it to, to, to tomorrow. The question is, is how much rain are we going to get on Thursday? You know, um, obviously, the, the, if it's not a lot, it, by, by Saturday, it'll be firm again. It'll be fine because they've got those sub-air systems here where they can suck the water out and they can get the, the you know, it won't be as soggy. So it, it'd be nice to have a firm, fast Masters. It, it changes the tournament. It makes you hit the ball. It, it rewards the ball strikers. You know, it's harder to hold greens. It's harder to keep the ball in the fairway if it's, if it's, if it's dry. You know, the ball runs out more, which means you got to have more control. So um, kind of hoping for that. It, it makes for a better tournament, I think. And, um, you know, it also makes for a better tournament when you don't have weather delays. No doubt there. Xander Shoffley might have that distinct honor now of being the best player out there without winning a major. He had trouble in the players closing it out. What's he going to have to do, or can he do it this week? He sure can. You know, can and will he is the question. I mean, he, he was right there in the mix with Tiger in 19. It's been five years. It's crazy. You know, he's had some, he's had some good majors. Um, he's had a lot of good tournaments. He, he's, what, he's fourth or fifth in the world without having won in more than a year, which that leads – that. That, uh, that tells you all about his consistency because um, you're not going to be up that high if you're, if, you're, if you're not winning unless you're contending a lot. So, you know, this, we've had a, a strange year. The stars other than Scheffler, Wyndham Clark to a degree, and Hideki who was outside of the top 50 when he won. We've not had the stars step up, you know. Xander, 
Spieth, uh, Justin Thomas, Cantlay, Max Homa. Um, those guys have not been winning. They've really not been contending that much. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if, if that gets done this week, if, if one of those guys emerges or, or at least is in contention. Victor Hovland's another one, won the FedEx Cup, you know, and now he's really been pretty quiet all year. All right. You could have Joaquin Neiman or you can have Ludwig Aberg. Who would you take? I think I would take Neiman at this point. He just, he's just shown more form uh, this year. And uh, he's also played here before, which is this is Oberg, Oberg's first, or Aberg's first. I'm sorry, I'm just butchering his name. Um, this is his first Masters. Him and Wyndham Clark are playing the Masters for the first time. And, you know, the history suggests that first timers don't win. I'm not, you know, if, if anybody's going to do it, it might be one of those two guys and break that, break that hex back to Fuzzy Zeller in 79. But, but Neiman has won two live events. He won the Australian Open. He's been highly motivated to get here. Um, it's important for him to have a good week. And I, I uh, you know, I'm very curious to see how he, how he handles it. Bob, uh, continued success with the book. Drive the lasting legacy of Tiger Woods. It's available everywhere. And uh, have a great Masters week for yourself and safe travels. Thanks so much. I appreciate you having me. Bob Harrig, Sports Illustrated, joining us once again. Follow him on X at Bob Harrig, H A R I G. There's a little Masters preview for you. Now we'll switch gears and talk the National Football League with Pat Kerwin. He is next on Miller and Moulton. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music 7 days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 114.98 Tamiami Trail you are listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Good morning, fellas. Good morning, Pat. 
Good morning. Yeah. Everything good? Everything's really good. How about you? Yeah. Just a little dead spot between now and the draft. Just trying to get Yeah, it is. Way. The league's a little quiet right now, isn't it? Yeah, I can tell from my emails. <laughs> I usually get like 125 or so a day. I was at like five yesterday. It's okay by me. Just catching up a little bit on stuff for the draft show. Uh, it is weird, though, when things get quiet. <laughs> All of us are programmed to have action, 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 and are totally incapable of stirring up stories when there's nothing going on. Hello. Mr. Sweat did a good job of helping us out here. Oh, with the uh, DUI there? Yeah. He's a bit of a clown. I mean, the guys that interviewed him at the combine were concerned with his partying, which he admitted to, but he had to. They already knew about it. We're catching up. I spent a lot of time yesterday on uh, J.J. McCarthy. Can I watch a game tape and then I watch a Drake May tape and then I go back and watch it. I go back and forth. That's what I'm down to, honing in on those two guys. I ought to say McCarthy actually moved up the ladder a little bit for me. He would be great with Arthur Smith in Pittsburgh. That would be the perfect place for him, but they're not you going mean, there. You mean play action city? Yeah, that's his world. And he's really, really, he's like Boomer when Boomer was a play action pass guy. I mean, I just watch the linebackers. Every time he's in a play action, I go back and watch the linebackers. They don't freaking move. They, they think the ball's in the belly of the back. Yeah. yeah. Some of these guys, little hand fake, the linebackers have turned and running already. <laughs> they know it's horseshit. But with him, and his feet are pretty damn good. I mean, you can see what Jim did to help that guy. Would Roman. you draft him? Very carefully about where the off, what kind of offense it would be. You know, the lip service to the running game is not enough. You got to get a guy that proves that he will run the ball. Pete Carroll would do good with him. Pete wants to run the ball 50% of the game. Pete doesn't have a job. <laughs> so that kind of place. You know, I was laughing about uh, Belichick being out at the University of Washington in practice. I said, you well, know, it's good. Yeah, but Pete's kids, the OC. So the two, can you imagine Pete and Bill on the sideline watching practice? <laughs> and they're friendlier than people think, those two. Well, first off, who is Pete not friendly with? I mean, you know, Pete's a pretty friendly guy. Well, I'll give you an answer to that. You'll love it. <laughs> Scott Pioli. <laughs> Scott Pioli shows up at, at USC to watch practice. They've got like six first-round picks. Pete stops practice, walks over, and throws him off the field. Whoa! That practice was open to everybody, I thought. Except Scott. You know what he said to Scott? You screwed around with my best friend. Didn't treat him very good at the end at the Jets, so you're out of here. So Scott calls me up and goes, you, you got to repair this. I go, well, let, why don't we repair you and me first? Then we'll talk about repairing. <laughs> you are listening to Miller and Moulton exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. Ah, uh, it's building. It's building 16 days away, two weeks from Thursday. The NFL Draft, Pat Kerwin, NFL Radio, moving the chains weekdays 3 to 7. During the season, he moonlights on Sundays with CBS's NFL Today Show. Pat joining us once again, courtesy of Pinchers. Pinchers, Tampa to Key West, a dozen locations in between. Pinchers, where you can't fake fresh. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning, fellas. Uh, yeah, the draft is closing in on us and working on some little odd things like what makes this draft a little different than others. And 
really the first thing. I think this is the last effect of COVID. Uh, we have 87 guys that are really draftable, not guys that are going to get signed after the draft. 87 draftable players that are at least 23 years old, and we have 20 of those that are 24 already. That's not how the NFL likes to operate. They like drafting 21-year-olds. Uh, we got a couple 20s, but we got – this is the last – I think it's the last effect of, of the uh, COVID world. And there are certain positions where when you see 24, you get nervous. I don't think I get too nervous with quarterbacks, but I get nervous certainly with running backs. I get nervous with some of the linemen. So, yeah, it's interesting. Linebacker Peyton Wilson, he's 24. So some of these 24, Christian Haynes, I love that kid from UConn, 24. So you got to have a little appetite for that. And uh, I think experience is great, but there's a bunch, as I said, 87 guys, almost three rounds of older players. So if you've come from my world, you think about stuff like that. And that's fascinating to me because, I, you know, I could see where the experience part with some of these players you would like. But it sounds like that's not what the – I mean, the NFL would rather have the 21-year-old guy because they could get him into a second contract at 25 as opposed to these guys who are going to be closing in on 28 for their second contract. Yeah, I think they also like the 20-year-olds. Like some of the 20-year-olds that are very good, Neighbors is 20. Uh, Nate Wiggins is 20. James Williams down at Miami is 20. Why do they like those guys? Because they don't think they're completely molded yet. They think there's lots of room for growth, and at 20, they can withstand injuries better. There's a lot of things they like about it. But if you take neighbors as an example, and I'm not comparing him to the other receivers, but you're going to be talking about his second contract when he's 24. The same age as about 87 of these guys already. So the clock's always ticking on players. And I, I like to I, – I think it's the say goodbye to the COVID thing this year, but it's, it's certainly out there, and it's been brought up to me by a couple of uh, – assistant GMs, as, especially that are doing all the dirty work, trying to get ready. So those that's a little project I'm working on. Well, and just an addendum, you know, Cody Schrader, the running back from Missouri, yeah. you know, got a lot of attention. He was a walk-on D2. Then he walked on at Missouri, he led the SEC in rushing last year. On opening the first Sunday of the NFL season this year, Cody Schrader will turn 25 years old. Yeah. Well, then, you know, I now I understand it's college wear on his tires as opposed to pro, but, Pat, we basically start discarding running backs now at age 27, 28. So, I mean, don't you think that's got to affect his draft status where he becomes a day three guy now because you're thinking, well, hell, he may only have one four-year rookie contract in him. Yeah, and I think they get knocked down at around. And Ray Davis is in that. He's a running back. And also the kid from New Hampshire is in there as a 24 year old. So you're right. They're one contract guys. Now in the world of running backs, if he's savvy, if he understands, you know, protections, if he understands route running, then you get your good four years out of him. But I, I just think that it's part of the evaluation process. If I have a grade of just go eight Oh grade and the guy's 21 and the other guy with the eight Oh grades, 24, which, what do you, what do you think the tiebreaker is? <laughs> Age. Uh all right, Pat, how many first-round picks are there between the work you've done getting ready for this and spending time at the Senior Bowl and the Combine and all the people you talk to? How deep's this first round? I mean, a lot of times it's 23, 24 picks. I've heard it's a little higher than that. How good's the first round this year? Well, the quarterback thing's always Russian roulette. We all know that. It's 50-50, but there'll be four or five of them drafted. I think you know, Bo Nix is another guy who's old, so – Four or five of them, I think the top three receivers make the receiver class very good. In the first two rounds, I've got, I think, 10 receivers being drafted. So there's good depth there. We all know that the offensive tackle group is good. But I think there's some other groups like pass rushers. I think you're going to have to really think quick for the pass rushers, either Dallas Turner or the or Vers, versus 24 years old. There's another guy. So – yeah, I think it runs out of gas at the pass rusher pretty quickly. Talking with Pat Kerwin, NFL Radio, moving the chains weekdays 3 to 7, and he joins us courtesy of Pinchers. All right, on your show yesterday, and we were just talking about this off air, you started to do a little bit of a deep dive. You're really looking at these quarterbacks, and the thought is that, you know, the kid USC is going one and Daniels is going two. And the debate is going to be for New England or whoever. 
do you take Drake May or do you take J.J. McCarthy? And you're starting to do a deep dive into both. What is it that you are seeing? Well, I had presumed just on the superficial evaluation that May was better. And I might land up with that final conclusion, but certainly I'm catching up with uh, J.J. McCarthy and what he does. So areas that I'm working on, first off, is running skills. He gets a big plus there. Red zone. You know, the red zone offense is a different offense because there's no – the back line is an extra defender. You're playing against 12 in the red zone, and vertical threats don't count. because And play-action pass almost doesn't count because you're <laughs> – they're not falling for anything. No one's dropping into the end zone. So I like him in the red zone because he will throw a bullet. And I talked to Wilson yesterday, Roman Wilson, his receiver. You know, Roman Wilson, the reason I called him and asked him to come on the show, the guy has 12 touchdowns in 48 catches. Now, that's a touchdown every four catches. When you go look at him, it's a lot of this red zone stuff, and it's a bit of scramble stuff. So I do like those things so far about McCarthy. I don't think he has escape skills, which all the young ones are going to need. And I always felt like he was a rocket thrower, just, you know, like Kaepernick. But he's not. But he he doesn't use his touch game as much as I would like to see. But I did like his touch game with his tight end. He's got a little savvy style to him. So my impression of him has gone up to the point where I could understand why someone would take him over May. Doesn't mean I would. Not yet. But those are the things I like about him um, that are interesting to me. But like Mark asked me before about it, it's got to be the right fit. You got to go. He's got to go to a run first football team, not one that talks about it. Uh, His play action pass game reminds me of Boomer Esiason. He is committed to a real ball fake and he's got great feet to set off it. And you watch the linebackers. They're frozen when he's in the play action pass game, which I think is impressive. Well, I mean, isn't part of the fact that they were frozen is that Michigan ran the damn ball all the time? They better be frozen against play action pass because that was their MO. And I think that just gets to your other point that you have to put him in a run heavy offense. And, yeah. and so I mean, what what don't you like about JJ? Not enough reps. You know, the frequency, you don't get a big giant body of work, although sometimes that paralyzes you. Uh as I said, I thought he was – they didn't trust him to throw the ball, but that's not true. That they felt like, you know, we got to hide him and protect him with the run game. That's really not true. They just had this massive offensive line of 24-year-olds and 23-year-olds that could run block. I do think he can do more in the passing game than he's being given credit for. That would be my conclusion so far. Okay, let's just assume that May goes third to New England, although New England has a running back or two in which they could commit to the style that you want with J.J. McCarthy. But let's assume he doesn't go there. Between the Vikings and Broncos, the two teams that are mentioned that are going to trade up to Arizona or the Chargers to potentially get J.J. McCarthy, which then do you think would be a better fit for him, Minnesota or Denver? Uh, that's a great question because you've got two head coaches that can coach quarterbacks. What did I? What did we all learn about Sean Payton this year? He wants a pocket passer. When he had a guy that got outside the pocket named Russell Wilson, it frustrated him. And I talked to Sean about that. He his success came with Breeze, and Breeze threw from the midline all the time. So to me, that sounds like Drake May. Both of these guys can run, although I'd say McCarthy's a little bit better as a runner. He he can be very physical when he runs. Um, I just think the guy in Minnesota is a terrific quarterback coach. And he had a pocket passer, too. In yeah, but they got rid of all but they got rid of all their running backs. Like I'd love JJ McCarthy if they still had Cook. Well, they that was their biggest blunder of the year. They had the number 10 offense with the number 29 running game because they told themselves that Madison could do it. We all knew he couldn't do it. Now they already got rid of him. So, yeah, they're going to have to get running backs. There are plenty of running backs out there still. You can go get yourself a a running back on a one-year deal. You can get three of them if you want. Load up a stable full of those guys. And most of the running backs are going to go in the third, fourth round anyway. So you can fill it up if you want to. 
but it's a good question. Both these are true quarterback coaches that are running these football teams. Which is more likely to move up in your estimation? Is it are they? I mean, they're both going to try. Minnesota has more resources, it seems. So are they more likely to be the team that'll move up? They're both desperate, right? They got rid of their quarterbacks. They put themselves in a blind position where there's no escape and they have to go deliver. To me, if I'm Arizona, those guys, Arizona has a lot of picks. They don't need any more picks. Arizona should take their favorite receiver. To me, the landing spot might be Tennessee. Tennessee's not drafting a quarterback. Tennessee could use a little extra juice. I think I'd be looking more inclined to go there. By the way, Denver doesn't have a second round pick. Right. Okay. So they've got their no, pick. They don't have firepower. Right. And then, you know, and the, have a bunch of picks late in the draft. For what it's worth, Minnesota doesn't have a second or a third round pick, but they've got the two ones, 11 and 23. So if you're thinking about firepower and moving up and trading and what have you, Minnesota with more immediate firepower in this draft. He's Pat Kerwin. NFL Radio, Moving the Chains, and CBS's NFL Today Show. Pat joining us, courtesy of Pinchers, Tampa to Key West, all points in between Pinchers, where you can't fake fresh. When we come back in our remaining moments with Pat Kerwin, we'll ask him what organizations are doing right now. Are they done with the workouts and the evaluations? And are they setting their draft board? And also, we'll talk trades. Is this when the conversations start? Pat Kerwin, more with him on the other side. And then Isaac Shade to talk about UConn going back to back here on Miller and Moulton. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. When choosing something of high value and personal significance, such as a diamond, you want to shop with the best. And the mall is not the place to be. Here are my friends, Jason and Todd, with the Diamond District. Take a stroll in the mall, pop into a few joy stores, and you'll soon discover you're in the wrong place. Rings begin to look all like you're not finding GIA certified diamonds. You quickly realize you know more than a salesperson helping you. And all the same financing gets pushed on you. Visit Jason and me, and you'll find America's top bridal designers dealing exclusively with the Diamond District. You'll find the largest selection of GIA certified diamonds, all priced 8 to 10% over cost. You'll find educated sales consultants who have many years' experience and are not paid commissions. And you'll find Todd and me in the store nearly every day, wanting to shake your hand and welcome you to our Diamond District family. Visit Jason and Todd. At the Diamond District. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6. And live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill. 11498 Tamiami Trail East. You are listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Hitting them these days, Mark? I get out there a couple times a week. Yeah, good. That could come to a crashing halt next year when my daughter starts at the Catholic school because I'll be having to make a longer run to pick her up. What's Where is that school? Downtown Fort Myers. What's the name of it? St. Francis Xavier. Oh, very good. Yeah. That's a little bit of a drive. Yeah. I think it'll be a good thing for her. Yes. 
My kids all went to Catholic schools. There's nothing like a little extra juice in a discipline. <laughs> yeah. Although my favorite Catholic school story is uh, your partner there, David Moulton, when he had to take theology at his college. Scranton. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say my Catholic school was tough. Literally, we used to go get the, we'd go to the principal's house, Father Landemeyer, get the keys to the school. So we'd go play basketball in the wintertime. Just, he'd let us have, we were seniors. He'd let us have the key to the school. We'd go to the gym. We learned that the key got to everything. And, well, there was a few algebra tests that were taken. <laughs> hey, you know, as Dan Marino would say, that's not cheating, that's research. Exactly. We got that right. Used to drink with Father Hamannick and the guys at the wine cellar every Friday. They had a they had a mid afternoon happy hour on Friday, and so Father Hamernick and the Jesuits, that little group that they had, they made sure they never had Friday afternoon classes. Yeah, they they knew where they had to be, and they were they would join us, and they they walked in one day, and we were sitting there, and of course we're underage. And we're sitting there drinking and having lunch and they walk in and we came over and brought our pictures and sat down with them and you know yes and so it, it became a friday thing that that's a true catholic education right totally there. totally the complete, well my yeah. favorite drinking brothers we had christian brothers and there was one brother living on each floor of the dorm mm -hmm. and don't you don't you know someone pulled a fire alarm so now we got to vacate the building the, trucks are there and uh, the brothers were too shit faced to get up and come out <laughs> <laughs> ah that's great yeah. they were prepared to burn right there in the building for those that don't know first semester freshman year i'm in a theology class and the professor is talking about uh, the professor basically says that everything in the bible is true Okay, and no one participated in this class, and I raised my hand, and I said, come on. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, and he goes, really, name me one thing. I said, can we talk about Noah and the ark? Yeah. Okay, can we start there? All right, and he literally said, he tried to kick me out of the class, and I said, no, I pay for this. I say, you go. <laughs> yeah, you were destined for a C. I was going to say, the best I could do in that class was a C+. Plus. There's... No recovery from that. Nope. Nope. Yeah. He wasn't a Jesuit, though. He was a regular professor. It was funny. The, Je the Jesuits didn't try to sell it that hard. No, no. Those guys are pretty wide open. Yeah, I, I think about you and your Catholic education. It's kind of hysterical, really. My mom sent me to CYO camp when I was young for a few years. That, that's about the end. But I was like seven, nine, and she said to me, you want to keep going to church? I said, no. She went, okay. Good Lord Almighty. It's a lot of, it's a, it's a very young age to give that decision to. Well, yeah. she was busy. She had three jobs. It worked perfect. She, that was the answer she was hoping for. Right. That's why she asked. Right. It was kind of a pain for her. Trust me, my daughter was really happy when she had a 9.30 soccer game and had to go to 7 o'clock Mass on Sunday. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember the Masses in Latin, though. My first Masses were in Latin. Wow. What the I, heck? I was an altar boy having to say Mass in Latin. Golly. That was challenging. I'm like, yeah. I didn't even know I what knew it was. I the first and... two words of every prayer, and then I just mumbled after that. <laughs> You're listening to Miller and Moulton, exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. 21 minutes past the hour. Isaac Shade to talk UConn. Going back to back, who's going to get the Kentucky job? We'll talk a little college hoops with Isaac coming up in a little more than 15 minutes' time. But our remaining moments with Pat Kerwin from NFL Radio. Moving the chains weekdays 3 to 7. He joins us once again, courtesy of pinchers all right pat of all you know you we i think i asked you this before but drake may does he concern you of being a bust in this where where do you see drake may what do you like about him what don't you like about him 
Well, I spent time with him. I like the kid. I think he's coachable. He's very athletic. He gets what it takes to be a quarterback. He's not going to be shocked by the workload or any of that stuff. Um, he's physically gifted. He's big. He can run. He's uh, And he's smart. When Jim and I tried to pin him down on, on stuff. Once I realized the guy was smart, we felt like we had the liberty of asking him some very serious, complicated protection questions, coverage beaters, um, not the little stuff they ask when they put him on the board. That's my favorite. This is a waste of time. Yeah, diagram cover two. I, I did that in third grade, fourth grade. You know, no, he is smart. So I do think he'll handle the cerebral part of it, and I don't think he's going to have a problem eventually being a leader. Someone asked me yesterday the four number, the top four things you need in a quarterback, and I said leadership's at the top of the list. Your veteran teammates are in the huddle. They're making decisions subconsciously about you if you don't have leadership skills. So that, then accuracy, football intelligence. So, uh, And he kind of hits all those things good enough. I know it's very popular for people to say they think he's going to be a bust, but some of the guys saying those things were a bust themselves. So I don't really care what they say. The uh, If he gets taken by New England, I mean, I'm concerned if they go quarterback. I've been saying that their roster is not good enough to take a quarterback in this year's draft at third overall. They've got so much work to do. Don't do that to a quarterback. Get the roster decent and then get your quarterback. Um, do you, if I were to say that in the room, would you shoot me down? Do you just, hey, he's good enough, we're taking him? I would shoot it down. Not for that reason. I would shoot it down because I, you, meaning the person who thought that way, can't predict if we're going to be in position to get a great quarterback in two years. So if your grading system, forget that you, I'm with you. I don't need to put him on the field right away. But if your system says that he's a franchise quarterback, just take him. The head coach has already said he wants to play Jacoby Brissett for the whole year. So, if you're thinking about protecting, which you would like to think Chicago would have figured out with the two busts in the first round, they've already put them on the field too fast. And they're going to put the third guy in the field too fast. But the head coach up there in, in New England has already talked about, we'll play Jacoby till the kid's ready. So, But don't pass on him because next year you might be so far away from the only good quarterback in the draft. That I was trained by Dick Steinberg to think that way. You take your quarterback – you put him on the sideline until he's ready, but you don't pass on him because you may never be in front of one again. Look at Minnesota. What if no one trades with them? Well, that's what I'm wondering. If you're Arizona and the Chargers right now, what are you doing with these phone calls? Because you're obviously taking calls. You're, you've talked about this before, Pat, that the initial phone calls are already starting. Ideas are being put in teams' heads. But with a Marvin Harrison Jr. there, Arizona needs a receiver badly. Um, and they got a lot of picks. They got 11 picks. They had six in the top hundred, you know, six, but Rick, six in the top 90. Yeah. Thank you. Even better. Rick Spielman said it the other day, Minnesota is in a bind. They're going to have to overpay. So what's the overpay definition? The two number ones in this draft next year's number one, and probably a third just to make everyone smile a little bit more. They, they can beat them up. But that's what they're going to have to do. And, you know, you already said it. Denver can't compete with that. But they're not going to do it for less. Okay, let's just say it's something like that. I mean, that's three ones, by the way. I, I would. I don't know if you have to throw in anything extra after three ones. But let's just say that's what Arizona's asking for. If you're Arizona, okay, you've got six of the first 90. You got two ones and two and three threes this year. Do you Do you make that deal and move down? Well, they're not going to get the receipt. All the receivers will be gone. The top well, three right. Your top three receivers will be gone. The uh, pass you know, arguably, will be gone. The, the best pass rusher will be gone. Top two tackles will be gone. And probably the top two pass rushers. I don't think Verse will make it to – only because that's such a short list. So if they didn't have a lot of picks, let's say they had six or seven picks, I, I, I would do the deal. They got 11 picks. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. They can they can get the best receiver in the draft according to them, 
And then they have enough firepower to get right back into the first round on their own if they want to. Well, and they've got 27 late in the first round yeah. anyway. They could land it with three first round picks without m messing up going down. Now, the Chargers, meanwhile, they have a pick in every round and they have an extra fourth and an extra seventh. All right. If you're the Chargers and Minnesota's offering you two ones and a little something, something to move up to five, would you do it? Yeah, I don't think that I think they will turn down the deal because it'll be too weak. No one cares about sevens. I can get a seven in five seconds. Take no, 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 no. Well, well, like Minnesota's got two fours. They don't have a second or a third this year. So they'd have the two ones. They could give the Chargers one of their fourths this year and throw in a third next year. Well, Rick Spielman, who was the GM in Minnesota, said it's going to be three ones and another wow. pick. So if you're the Chargers, 11-23, a fourth rounder this year and a third rounder next year to move down six spots isn't enough for you? No. Okay. Not, only because I have enough of my own picks. I don't need more picks. Fair enough. So, Pat. That's why I think Tennessee's a landing spot. Okay. Well, I'm telling because you right now, if the job, sorry, Mark, if the Giants at six turn down this deal, okay, then I'm changing my tune about Joe Shane. Because the Giants should move down. The Giants have six picks, by the way. No, they're a prime candidate, unless they want a quarterback. Mm. Didn't didn't hear your answer to that one, David. Mm. Mark, you were about to talk. No, I, I I'm just curious because you look at this draft, Pat, and you know David loves the trades. He always thinks there's going to be more of them. He and I mm. fight over it every year. And to your point, Arizona with all their picks. They're in a good spot. The Chargers, you know, they they need players too. I mean, they you know, Bowers is going to be there. I don't know how far back they want to move because they need Bowers or a receiver. So it looks, I mean, Arizona and the Chargers don't seem to be as simple to get trades with as many people think. I agree with that. And both of them need primary receivers. So when you look at the draft, there are three potential number one receivers, guys that will be good enough to demand coverage roles. And – they need them, and they're sitting right in front of them. As I said before, Neighbors is 20 years old, and he is a lightning bolt. How good do you think Bowers is? Do you think he's uncoverable for eight years, or do you think he's TJ Hawkinson? Um, I think the guy, his route running reminds me of Kelsey. He gets wiggle out of those breaks, and he's open. Um, so I do think a lot of him. And it's a shallow – there's another shallow position. When you don't take that – if you need a, a matchup player, and that's what he is, he's a willing blocker, not a great one, but he's a matchup nightmare, you then have to start saying, if I pass on that dude, it's going to be a while before I find one, like maybe a year or two. So I, I think him and the two pass rushers are in prime position that you're going to want to take them, but – most I know that the Giants, I think the Giants really like J.J. McCarthy. Interesting. Having to move up from six, maybe, or just take him. Well, think about that. There's a little trade that you, you, Arizona would entertain. You're going to swap out with the Giants. Guess what? You're only going down, what, two spots? Okay, we're, pre take a quarterback? We're, we're pressed on time, though. Can the Giants give up their second-round pick to move up two spots? Yeah. Okay, so so it would take just – to move down two spots, the Cardinals would take a second rounder. Yep. Ten, okay. He's Pat Kerwin. Weekdays 3 to 7, moving the chains on NFL Radio. Isaac Shade talking UConn next. Visit Jason and Todd. At the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic 
exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches. You'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the diamond district this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and find timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. 0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You are listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Ryan, don't you think that numbers then can be misleading? I mean, if you've watched the two play, would you characterize them as the same? Maybe not, but are we sure Daniel Jones is a starter in the league? I mean, he hasn't proven to be durable enough. And only once out of four years has he proven to be good enough. So, but yeah, Trevor may not be, you know, great. He may only be good, but Jacksonville and getting rid of him. Yeah, but Ryan, that was supposed to be one of his strengths. You know, cerebral guy from Duke. David Cutcliffe raved about him. Cutcliffe worked with the Mannings. He could handle New York. We will find out. This could be the year Joe Shane and Brian Dable take control of the organization back from John Mara. Because John Mara loves Saquon. And Joe Shane walked away from Saquon. And John Mara loves Daniel Jones. They take a quarterback. (laughs) That's Joe Shane and Brian Dable saying, yeah, we inherited this guy. We don't want anything to do with him. No, Ryan, about Trevor, because Jacksonville, the best quarterback they've ever had is Mark Brunel, and the second best quarterback they ever had is arguably David Garrard. So, no. They're, they'll live with Trevor and go, hey, we've had trouble at this position. We'll take them. We'll work with them.
Trent, I have the feeling that, you know, Molten and I make comments that we have shirts older than you, which I do have clothes older than you. But you have older clothes than anybody your age, I know. It seems like your T-shirts may have been your T-shirts for six, seven years. Since high school? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it is. I mean, I'm, I'm a simple wear a whole lot no of no no it's not it's know. not a, it's just an observation not a knock yeah but it looked like you know now your t-shirts are worn that just like they're yep get a good shirt keep it a good shirt yeah heck yeah there's a rotation trust me that that ham shirt that i wear is old it, it's old but it still fits and it's comfortable Welcome back to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. Twenty-two minutes until the top of the hour. A reminder: you miss anything? MillerandMoulton.com. MillerandMoulton.com. We've already had David Sampson, Bob Harrig, and Pat Kerwin. Our poll question, is Tiger going to make the cut, yay or nay? That Mark Miller, the David Moulton on X. And right now, it's close to 50-50. 56% of you say that Tiger will make the cut. Hey, according to the hype, he's going to win the damn thing. Stop it. Talking about the Masters. Isaac Shade, he covers college basketball. Locked on college basketball is the podcast. You can also see the show on YouTube. Follow Isaac on X at Isaac with two A's. Shade and throw a C in there. S-C-H-A-D-E. Isaac, it's David and Mark. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, fellas. Uh, I'm doing okay. The madness has still taken hold of my house. I woke up to my daughter's my five-year-old daughter in southwest Missouri pounding the couch and screaming, I should have chosen UConn because her brother won our family bracket pool. So that's how things are going for me today. <laughs> she's hooked. Isaac, she's hooked. She's, she's in hooked. now. She's, she's sick with the madness. Well, obviously UConn, historic run back-to-back. Just how good was this team this year, Isaac? Yeah, I mean, that that's what's crazy is – UConn just put together the most dominant NCAA tournament run in the history of the NCAA tournament a year after putting together the most dominant NCAA tournament run ever. Uh, Last year, they won every game by 13 or more points. This year, they did it by 14 or more points. I mean, it it, it really, truly is an absolute crazy thing, uh, the the company that they have now put themselves in. I mean, you you look at things like uh, prior to this, only three programs had ever won six or more NCAA tournaments. UCLA, Kentucky, North Carolina, and now UConn. Kansas hasn't done that. Duke hasn't done that. Indiana, nobody. Just those four schools. And UConn is now in that company. Well, and not only that, all six titles since 1999, and no one else uh, is in that area code over the last 25 years. What most impresses you? The numbers speak for themselves, but just from what you've seen the last two years, what most impresses you about UConn in which you think, you know, nobody else does this? Is their ability to just, consistently pull away from teams. You know, I mean, we, we looked at it last night and it's like, oh man, this is the national player of the year that they're going up against. Can Donovan cling and hang with that? And then UConn just slowly and methodically and in an incredibly balanced sort of way just pulls away. And they've done it a year after losing 
five of their top eight scores. And this is an era because of the transfer portal, because of NIL, currently because of COVID eligibility, where it's really difficult to have an actual program rather than just building a one-year off team. But for me, the linchpin is Danny Hurley, their head coach, who, by the way, there's not a snowball chance in hell that dude is heading down to Lexington, Kentucky, I might add. Um, but like, he is the linchpin that brings this thing together. It's his identity. It's his moxie. It's his like brashness um, that I think is something of a very controlled act in a way uh, where he got to kind of play a character when he's out on court. And so this is something that I think is going to be able to continue in an era where a lot of schools might not be able to. His offense is something, Isaac. I mean, the moxie and the caricature and all that stuff. But when you when they get into their sets, the motion that's going on, what they're doing offensively, they they continually can work the shot clock to under ten and come up with a great shot every time. They can, and and they are doing it at a level of sophistication that most other schools in the nation aren't doing. I mean, when when you go and break down those sets that you just mentioned. It is poetry in motion uh, in, in, in a beautiful sort of way. And it's because they've done a great job of getting all these complementary parts. It's not that they're having to go out and try to track down a whole bunch of one and done, uh, you know, top 10 elite talent coming out of high school. It's just that the pieces all fit so well. Tristan Newton, who is the back-to-back leading scorer of these two national championship games, is a phenomenal point guard. Cam Spencer is basically Danny Hurley Jr. out there screaming and yelling and pumping his fist, but he is a dude who can do all sorts of things. Donovan Klingon, perhaps the only big in the country that was kind of enough to manage Zach Eady on his own and play him straight up, allowing those other four guys to do what they needed to do. It really is a beautiful thing to watch. UConn going back-to-back first team to do it since the Gators in 06 and 07. Well, you mentioned Hurley and how you think there's no chance and you know what, that he's going to Lexington. Uh, what do you think they do? <laughs> well, the, the problem is the next guy on my list for them, because because I had said um, yesterday ahead of the game that Danny Hurley's phone should be buzzing in his pocket as he shook Matt Painter's hand last night. Like they needed to make him say no and back up the Brinks truck immediately. Uh, it feels pretty definitive that he is out. The problem is my second call was Nate Oates uh, from Alabama, and he put out a very definitive statement last night himself just ahead of the game. And so the other kind of names that were on my list after those two uh, are Scott Drew at Baylor, who, yes, he just declined the Louisville job a little while ago, um, but he and A.D. Mitch Barnhart at Kentucky have a relationship, I think, uh, I felt the same about Jay Wright. I think you have to make him tell you no to coming out of retirement, and he has done so. Uh, I think you got to take a look at Billy Donovan. But the problem is, does Billy Donovan want to come back to this college landscape when he's been coaching at the NBA level for a while now and doesn't have to do all the things that come along with being a college coach? And then after that, there are some second-tier guys I would start looking at. Tommy Lloyd at Arizona, Mark Pope, who is a Kentucky alum that's at BYU. There's a whole host of guys, but uh, these top two guys on my list, they've both they've struck out on both of them. I know Kentucky is an incredibly desirable job, but given the fan, do you think, I mean, with Oates already taking himself out of it, with Hurley kind of taking himself out of it, um, is there some animosity towards taking that job for some guys? Um, I, I mean, I definitely think there is perhaps in the regard that it's this fishbowl, it's this spotlight that you got to thrive under almost like going to New York to coach the Knicks or something like that, where it's just, it is such a thing. Big blue nation is this rabid fan base that a lot of people don't want to deal with. Um, but part of it is if I'm Dan Hurley, man, I've got it made right now up in stores, Connecticut. If I made oats, things are rolling at Alabama. And both of those guys have everything they need. And I I just don't think that even the luster of coaching the Kentucky Wildcats is enough to pull guys 
from what would be an ideal situation, um, which is saying something because, again, this is Kentucky. And we're talking about a situation where now we've had turnover at Duke and North Carolina and Villanova and Kentucky within four college basketball seasons of each other. So it's a wild changing of the guard right at the top of the sport. And so I, it really is a thing to see who, who is going to be the guy uh, in, in Lexington. So it's bonkers. Isaac Shade, host of Locked on College Basketball. It's a show that's also available on YouTube. You can follow Isaac on X at Isaac Shade. Throw a C in with Shade, S-C-H-A-D-E. Listen, Isaac, you know, we still have, what, 30 more days to go in the transfer portal. So it seems as if it's very difficult to look ahead until about mid-May in this sport, right? Because we really don't know what these rosters are going to look like, do we? No, we absolutely don't. Look, I'm going to put out a way to top 25. That'll be actually our Locked On College basketball show um, probably tomorrow because we got to keep talking all this Kentucky madness first. But it really is such a crapshoot. I mean, you, you just ha- you almost have to set parameters. Like, for example, ESPN's way to top 25 right now. It's like, if a player is projected in the top 60 or better, we've projected them to cut. Like, they just have, you, that's all you can do right now is take a look at it. As you said, the transfer portal is open through May 1st. That is, it was cut back to 45 days this year, and that is day 45. And for those who might not be aware, that doesn't mean you have to commit by day 45. It just means you have to enter by day 45 in order to be eligible to immediately play next season. And so we, we do our best, but, but even doing so, it really, it really is just us trying to get content out. If we can just be honest about it and get people talking, that's all that exercise is at this point in the year. Will they do anything with the portal? This is, this is stupid to have the tournament going on and have the portal. I mean, it's just flat-out stupid. They could open it today. They could open it tomorrow, open it for 30 days, and this would make sense. Are they going to make any changes to this? Well, what's interesting is they had the opportunity to do that last year. Like, you, my friend, are preaching my language, so thank you. Uh, they, they did change the duration of it this year. It was 60 last off season, and they cut it back. The problem is, they didn't change the starting date, like you just said. And that's the issue. Like, here's how I've been describing it. Imagine that the day after the regular season ended for the NBA, we opened up free agency the next day. Imagine we get to October and the Major League Baseball season ends, and the very next day before those wild card games, we open free agency. Like, that's what college basketball is doing. And that's what college football is doing, by the way. It's not just basketball. The day after we get um, the, the, the playoffs for college football, it's the next day after all of that is announced. And so you're asking teams and head coaches and assistant coaches to not only be preparing for their upcoming game, but to also in the same breath be scouting and getting transfer portal guys. And for example, Gonzaga brought in a transfer during their NCAA tournament run. And so that means if I'm a coach, I have to think, all right, I've got 12 hours I'm going to work today. How do I divide those up? They should not be having to think in those terms. It's absolutely ludicrous. So yes, 100%. It should either open. Here's the three things I've thrown out there. Either the day after the final four is set, when we're down to four teams, or today, as you just said, or let the national championship have a week of a new cycle and then open it next Monday. I think any of those three would be great. Um, but just not the day after Selection Sunday. I mean, it is in, insanity. Because think about it. It's also the soon as we get to Selection Sunday, what happens? The coaching carousel and coaches moving okay. and fired and the whole deal. So, yeah, it, it's nuts. Isaac Shade is covering it all. Locked on college basketball. Locked on college basketball. It's a podcast. It's available also on YouTube. Follow Isaac shade s-c-h-a-d on x isaac thanks for making time for us congratulate your son on winning the family pool that's important that's self-esteem to go through life with and uh we'll talk to you soon 
<laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me. Have a good day. Isaac Shade, kind enough to join us this morning. Locked on college basketball. I like the name. I like having a guy named Shade on the show. He can throw shade while being shade. Nice. Also, I mean, let's face it, Isaac is a cool name. Yes, it is. Isaac. I mean, have you ever met anybody named Isaac who's not cool? Have you ever seen a character in a movie on television named Isaac who's not cool? He was the bartender on Love Boat, man. Exactly. That dates us. That was all the way back in the <laughs> 80s. I've never heard of that show in my life. Love Boat? Hold on. You've never heard of it? I We get you've never seen it, and that's for your betterment. But you've never heard of it? Never heard of it. It sounds the like a love show. Da, da, da. <laughs> no. <Wow. laughs> I, if by the way, look up the list of people who guest starred on Love Boat. Oh, it's amazing. It is. They all did it. Yes. Namath did it. I mean, you know, you you active athletes did the Love Boat. Oh, it's it's, big. Was it a weekend show or was it? I thought it was Saturday. Wasn't Love Boat right before Fantasy, Fantasy Island, Island, right? Yeah. yeah. On ABC. The plane. Hey. The plane. The plane. There we go. Was the plane. Okay. Isaac Shade joining us here on Miller and Moulton. It was a good show. Covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. David Sampson, Bob Herrick, Pat Kerwin, Isaac Shade. Poll questions about Tiger Woods. I mean, could we get any more hip and happening? Hell, in the bonus hour, we may have to discuss the Cowboys just to keep this pace up. And LeBron's legacy. What does Dan Hurley going back to back to affect LeBron's legacy? As David Moulton leading the Tiger Woods hype train this morning. Everybody says he looks like Tiger Woods again. I hope everybody is right. Along the network, have a great rest of your day. In the 239, the Diamond District Bonus Hour is next. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps. Have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music 7 days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. Mark Miller for Molly May. Why Molly May, do you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The waterways of Naples are a beauty to behold. And the Bayfront Inn has multiple ways for guests to enjoy the water and have some fun. Gather your family and friends and enjoy a leisurely day on the water with a pontoon or deck boat. If you prefer to explore the waterways without a motor, the Bayfront has canoes, standboards, and kayaks. At the end of your journey, enjoy lunch or dinner at the Bamboo Tropical Bar and Grill. The Bayfront Inn. Something for everyone. On Fifth Avenue in Naples. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. 
For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You are listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Just see something here. Thirty two Oscar winners appeared on the Love Boat. The Love Boat ran from seventy seven to eighty seven. I seventy seven to eighty six. They did three Love Boat movies. Thirty two. Oscar winners appeared on the love boat. Jamie Lee Curtis, Tom Hanks, even though he didn't win an Oscar, Michael J. Fox. Ernest Borgnine, George Kennedy, Shirley Jones. Rita Moreno. Terry Hatcher, Milton Burrell. Donna Reed. Tim Robbins. Ginger Rogers. Harvey Corman. Paul Williams. Shelly Winters. Betty White. Jane Wyman. What, what didn't she do? Married to Reagan. This show was gold and it was horrendous. All at the same time. Leslie Nielsen. I'm just going through all the... the Kathy Bates. Donna Michi. Who appeared in three episodes. Yeah, I'm just going through the list of three. I'm, I'm on three right now on the list. Adrian Barbeau. Raymond Burr, Tony Danza. Lloyd Bridges. Wasn't the Miami Vice guest list also pretty yes. uh-huh. wild? Yes, but yeah. the the Love Boat, actually, the premise was, you know, it's a different cruise leaving, so there was people coming on, and there was a story, you know, some... Trent, it was a Hallmark movie, only it was multiple movies in one weekly, one-hour episode. And at the end, they fall in love and they kiss. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely checking this out today. It's, the show just, was just the theme horrendous. song. Just the theme song. The show was horrendous. I, I horrendous. take a four-hour nap. I'm going to check Hell, this. one of the guys on the show became a congressman. Seriously, Fred Grandy, Iowa. 20 years in Congress. Show is horrendous. We watched. Yes, we did. Because we didn't have a choice. Nope. Three damn channels. Okay. Here we go. Here we three, <laughs> two. You are listening to Miller and Moulton, exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. It is time for the Diamond District bonus hour, but you've got to, I'm telling you, spice up your life. 
by joining Miller and Moulton on twitch.tv slash Miller and Moulton. Because during the commercial breaks, sometimes we are really good. I mean, you know on the air, once we turn the microphones on, we're eh. But sometimes during the breaks, this is a quality show. And we just did an entire segment on the love boat. <laughs> Honestly, it's our best damn material of the week. All right. I don't know if we can find a way to get it and put it out there and what have you. It, you know, sometimes we're really good. Unfortunately, most of you didn't hear it. We're trying to educate Trent. I just I don't know if we're educating him or just derailing him. I know. I'm I'm afraid we're gonna go too far and he's just gonna drop out, if you know what I mean. Exactly. And then we don't have a producer, and that'd be a problem. That would be a problem. Because this just in, not a lot of people want to get up at these awful hours for worse money. So, you know, I'm fearful that maybe we're going a little, a little bit too far. A little bit. A little bit. Have no but he's fear. never he had never heard of the love boat, though. Well, yeah, he was born 12 years, 13 years I, after the show was off the air. I didn't say that he had ever watched an episode. I'm just saying he's never even heard of it. That's because we're old. I feel like, you know, remember you and I, I think we're at the same meeting at the radio station in which uh, they told us, they're like, listen, you know, if you're trying to appeal to the younger demographics, here are the things you cannot mention. And they start rattling off the Reagan administration. And they just start rattling off like 30 things. Yeah, you mention all that stuff. You're not appealing to 18 to 34. And I remember you and I looked at one another and went, my goodness, I think we brought all that stuff up so far this week. <laughs> <laughs> so I just feel like this is one of those things like, come on, he's got parents. How the heck was he not sitting around at a... You know, the Thanksgiving dinner and somebody brought up the love boat and he didn't go, what the heck was that? There are several shows that I have heard of that I'm even pretty well versed in that I've watched from that era. But Love Boat is not one of them. Uh, well, that's it's probably good for you. It, it's show. very good. It it's shows. very And see, the other part is, see, his dad's my age. His mom's younger, though. So mom totally missed the love boat. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Mom was born in 74. So I'm sure that was, you know. Not quite her demo yet. No, she was becoming a teenager when the love boat was ending. But you got to remember, three channels. It was a Saturday night. It's not like there's there's a good chance it was on in her house. By the end of it, though, we had cable. True. By the time you get, to, by the time the end of that show's coming, there were choices. That's true. All right. <sighs> Ask your mom if she's ever heard of the love boat. See what she says. Okay. I know your dad has. He had no choice. Oh, yeah. He had no yeah. choice in Hemlock but to watch the love boat right into Fantasy <laughs> Island. He I'm telling you right now. He had no choice. Uh, uh, bonus hour of Miller and Moulton. Good show today. If you missed it, go to MillerandMoulton.com. David Sampson, Bob Herrig, Pat Kerwin talking college hoops with Isaac Shade. So I'm curious. Uh, we said yesterday UConn was not likable. They're very northeast. Okay, you know, they're it, obnoxious, bordering on arrogant. Not as arrogant as the women's team, but you know, arrogant. Oh no, they're they're bordering on it. He's okay. very arrogant. They're not like they're great, David. They are they are assassins. I mean, they are flat out killers. How well they play. They're not likable. There's nothing likable about UConn. Not one thing. When they show crowd shots, they're not likable. When they show coach shots, they're not likable. When they show player shots, they're not likable. They are not a likable team, but they're damn good. There was a cutaway of Matt Painter somewhere between like five and eight minutes left in the game, and he's just sitting on his stool. And they zeroed in on him for a few seconds. And I don't know if you were playing the game that I was playing. But I was thinking to myself, so what is Matt Painter saying to himself right now? Want to get away? <laughs> and I was saying he's having a conversation with himself, going, I've worked my whole life to get to this game. And it took us as a school 55 years to get to this game. And I got the two-time National Player of the Year, and I got the best team that I'm probably ever going to put out on the court. 
and we are getting systematically taken apart right now. And they played a really good first half, too. Well, first 12 minutes. They played a really good first 12 minutes. They're up 23-21. They're shooting over 50%. It, but the pace, though. It, it, and, and you know, Tracy Wolfson said that. about When they came out of a TV timeout, she listened to the huddle. And Hurley said, keep this pace up. They cannot handle this pace. Tire them out. Keep this up. I thought she did a terrific job last night. She's always good. Last night, I thought she was exceptional. The information she was getting and relaying about both teams. But he was right. They they couldn't keep up with the pace. Well, they came out of that under eight timeout in the first half, and he put Edie on the bench for the first time. And UConn goes on a 9-2 run, and he even brings Edie off the bench within a minute, puts him back in the game. But UConn's like, no, we got you now. Got you now. We cornered you. We're going to the body. And it's not like UConn needed more practice playing at that pace, but they sure got it against Bama. That was not a bad prepper nope. for this one. in Purdue, a team that played slow all year, their style of basketball is just naturally slow. I mean, we all said it. We thought UConn could play Purdue's game. Purdue can't play UConn's game. So, but they're very likable for Mark Miller. He had UConn beating Purdue in all his brackets. And so you, you had to cash. In I cashed. I, I did. Uh, my cousin runs one. He lives in Boise, Idaho, and sends out his thing. He's, he's actually my god. Big age difference. He's my godson as well. And uh, last night at 11.52, he Venmoed me a nice chunk of change. <laughs> is that going right to the hard rock? I don't need to put it in the hard rock. We don't lose. All we do is win. We are we are the Philadelphia Flyers missing the playoffs away from getting back to even. <laughs> and that's with going damn near three weeks, not getting a damn thing right. I mean, in three weeks, we took apart what we had done in three months to the good. That's how bad our three weeks were. Man, did we Mets see. lost opening day. I know. What the heck? I mean, man, must be time for an eclipse. <sighs> I'm sorry. I brought in case you missed it earlier in the show, David Moulton is very anti-eclipse because he apparently thought the whole world was going to go dark yesterday. A little bit. I Just a little bit. <laughs> what the? What the? A little bit. I thought it, it partly it would Did become you not partly see cloudy. Any of the maps where it showed where the darkness was going to be? We're sixty four percent. We were supposed to get sixty four percent of the eclipse. But it's the sun. I mean, it's not going to get. <laughs> I mean, ten percent of the sun could be showing, and the sky is still going to be blue. It's the sun. Well, I didn't think you could <laughs> lose two thirds of you know what you bring of to the, the table. sun. Up the, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's the sun. I mean, then why the hell was everybody in Florida making a big deal about it? If apparently it's just, listen, if the sky's not going to darken, this ain't a thing. Well, that's why people were losing their minds driving to the middle of nowhere in the middle of this country. Right, there was a track that went through Texas and up all the way through no, New York. I, it was, I get it. It's like it, a storm. It, it was only on the... It, you like maps. I do. I'm, I'm sick of them, you know, because the guy stands in front of the green board talking over them, and it's like, you're taking all my time, dude. That was the other thing. Sports was at the end. So when every time they keep running long with that fake chit-chat, they don't like each other. Okay, it's, it's, stop trying to pretend you like one another. You're friendly with one another. You've never broken bread together. You're never going to break bread together. Okay, stop it with the fake anchor talk. Okay, enough. Just just do the news. Hand it to the weather. Do the weather. Get it to the sports guy. He's got the stuff that the only stuff people care about on network television right now. Get it to the sports guy. Well, one thing's for for sure is uh, David bought stock, more stock, and his granddaughter yesterday because yep, she, she, hated the, she hated the eclipse party. She thought it was absurd. She's two, and trust me, she communicated to everybody there. She thought this was blank, 
Okay, and take my glasses. This is stupid. Get me back in the school. I want to learn. Where are my friends? This is re- why. Are, why are we having a party for this? For this. Give me a break. John Cal had a great view of the eclipse in Arkansas. Walking his dog. By the way, was the dog in the carriage? Okay, the one time he was walking, just see, he was walking a carriage. He went for a walk with the dog. He had the dog dog on a leash. But there's another time when the reporter goes across the street to ask him the question, and he politely says, yeah, I don't want to comment. He's pushing a carriage. Small dog? He's 65 years old. I'm assuming there wasn't a child in there. No, but I I mean, I I see the old ladies all the time with their Los Apsos. Put you know the dog walks over, but then they put it in the stroller. I know and they push the stroller with the dog. Maybe he was doing that. Well, that's what I wonder. Was the dog in the carriage? And do you think any less of him if he was? Yes, yes. I mean, it's not quite the equivalent of eating pizza with a knife and a fork, but it's in the area code. Yes. Come on, you don't walk the dog in the carriage. If the dog doesn't feel like walking, then you go back inside. I mean, that's the deal. Okay. We had a bulldog. We walked I, to the end of the driveway and we turned around. We, that's it. Dog was I done. Will, I will never forget when David and I had a conversation because David had the bulldog. The bulldog mm-hmm. walked to the end of the driveway. I it had dogs walk, and I'm like, well, you got to pick up after your dog. Goes, what do you mean? Your dog goes to the bathroom in someone else's yard? It's not like I can tell the dog where he's going to go. That's and you were cool. stunned by that. I'm totally against the rules. You got to be kidding me. Pick the dog up, put it in the middle of the street. You got to be kidding me. And it happened. I'd walk outside. I'm like, look at this. Three more dogs in my yard. Okay. I don't own a gun. It's a good thing. What the heck? So I just thought that is, I'm sorry. I, I just think it's out of line. A dog walking in someone else's yard. No, taking a dump in someone else's yard. Then you pick it up. You get the bag and you pick it up. Well, then why do I have three mounds in my yard? Obviously, they're not going to pick up. Bad neighbors. Your neighbors don't have dog etiquette. That that is against the rules right there. Thank you. Right. That's all I'm saying. That was Seinfeld's old bit. If aliens looked down and saw us picking up after our dog, who would they think was in charge? The dog. Miller and Moulton, the Diamond District bonus hour. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You're listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. So my buddy texted me from Augusta yesterday with his Monday memo, his master's Monday memo. Number one, still get a tingle deep in my plums when walking on the property. Two, met Vern Lundquist. 
He looks 117 years old and could die tonight, but quite the gentleman. And he has moved from here. He now lives in South Carolina, so he's now calling himself a true Southerner. Now that I'm a true Southerner, the pimento cheese sandwich is without doubt the best concession. If you think otherwise, you're a communist, move to North Korea. They sell cup koozies now, which makes the brews taste three times better. One I can't read. Phil is still adored by the fans. Watch them tee off one with a huge crowd full of support. Finally, they're letting in too many people. They've created more, more than I can ever remember. Took 45 minutes to get into the golf shop to get the sweet swag. This post says, this is the first time John Calipari has made the news on Final Four weekend since 2015. (laughs) Ah, that's solid. (laughs) That is solid. Also, yes, he had the dog in the stroller. Remember, UConn has just gone through 12 tournament games, and the closest game they played was Miami in the semis last year when they won by 13. In the Big East this year, they had wins decided by one, four, five, seven, seven, nine, and nine. You don't think the Big East is going to try to pound this home next year, do you? Very jealous. My kid's going to the Masters again this year. Really? Yes, it'll be a second. Is that because of who he works for? They've got tickets. Wow. The The... Somebody in Michael's family has tickets. His mom's, maybe his grandma, somebody has tickets. I keep telling him, you know, I took my dad once. (laughs) Just saying, I took my dad once. Yeah, that's funny. Have not had a betting favorite win the Masters since Tiger in 05. And Scotty's the favorite? Oh, yeah. Biggest favorite since Tiger in, what, 2013? Mm-hmm. So I flipped on, I watched John Oliver yesterday. That's getting bad. Oh, really? He, it's, he, the stories, the main story is the whole show now. And I, I mean, he did a whole show on the death penalty yesterday. I'm sorry. I don't care. Brings up some excellent points, but it was out of the 36 minutes. It was 28 of them. I want funny. Right. Used to be a lot more stuff before he got to it. Now I just kind of fast forward to the to the end. Yeah. But after it, I, there's a show on Max about Nickelodeon. Welcome to the bonus hour, brought to you by Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton.
21 minutes past the hour. It's Masters Week. A little over two weeks out from the draft. Baseball season is well underway. You know, it's funny. I'm wondering if uh, in these parts that the reason the baseball season doesn't feel like there's got any juice. Remember, the Rays were, what, 13-0 and last year? Mm-hmm. Now they're 5-6 and six to start. The, uh, the Marlins, uh, how's that going? One in Have 10? they started the season yet? <laughs> One in 10? One and 10. Yeah. And uh, their young studs got to have uh, Tommy John after their somewhat older stud had the surgery late last year and it's going to miss all of this year. So, uh, yeah. By the way, did you hear the story a couple days ago? Apparently, like when Skip Schumacher got the job, he got a two-year contract with an option, a team option. There was a report out a couple days ago that the team has already declined the option. Didn't he win manager of the year last year? Didn't they go to the playoffs last year? I mean, if that's true, let me get this straight. We demoted the general manager who took us to our first full season playoff in 20 years. And the manager who did it, we said, yeah, I don't know about this guy. Let's just make it a two-year deal instead of a three-year deal. Makes it really difficult to have any faith in this franchise. Totally. I just, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. They got an all-you-can-eat section, and we're allowed to bring in French horns and tubas. And no, I mean, don't get. I still want to go to a game. I don't know. I'm just fascinated by franchises right now, and particularly the ones that are cratering. I mean, we could talk about UConn and South Carolina women and blah, blah, win, 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 uh, greatness, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Talk to me about how three different cities in Arizona don't want the Coyotes and are desperately trying to push the Coyotes to Houston or Salt Lake City. And the Coyotes and the commissioner desperately want to stay and the state of Arizona is like, no, we don't want them. Leave. Leave. Yeah, this is Gary Bettman's line in the sand. He <laughs> does not want to lose Phoenix. <laughs> but apparently even Bettman and Bill Daly and some of those around him are like, uh, boss, July 4th, man. We got we got to have an answer. This ain't working. So, but I just, I'm fascinated. I will say Pat got me a little fascinated with the Arizona Cardinals draft. And I know no one really cares about the Arizona Cardinals, but no, they with, don't. All, the, with all the picks they have. Mm -hmm. Two ones, two, three threes. They've got four and 27 in the first round. They got a very high second rounder. And then they've got two high thirds at 66, 71. And they also have 90. So they have six of the top 90. And they have 104 in the fourth round. And two fifths. They got 11 picks. I mean, they got a lot of picks in the first basically 100 picks. Of the, mm -hmm. So be right. curious if they move or if they're just going to try to load up with players and turn this roster on because they played hard for him last year. They really did. It was the best case scenario. The players clearly bought into what he's selling. They just were so bad that they couldn't win many games. So they're picking fourth. It was the perfect scenario. Now, hey. Could Arizona pull a Detroit here? That's what I'm wondering. The Bear framework is there. Bear with us. Dan Campbell, what did he start out like? One, 10 and one or something like that. His first year in Detroit, it was going very badly. And, but obviously they bought in and they've nailed two drafts in a row. Two. Well, what if Arizona's about to pull a Detroit? Remember year two in Detroit, they went nine and eight. Barely missed the playoffs, and then look at what they did. So could Arizona, you know. Arizona saying. and Green Bay intrigued the hell out of me in the draft with all the draft capital that they have. So Arizona's got six of the top 90. Green Bay's got five of the top 91. Two seconds, two-thirds. The two-thirds are late. One of the seconds is early. It's 41. See, I think Green Bay, they're already the youngest team in the league. Do you really need all five of these guys? Seriously. Or 
you know, where are they drafted in the first round? Like 25. Mm -hmm. Do you take one of those second rounders and move up? Get ahead of Miami and Pittsburgh, who are probably taking interior offensive linemen. And do you go grab somebody that they want and trade with the Rams, say, at 19? Or Cincy at 18? You know, do you and how Pat talked about the draft. If if Pat's right and the edge guys go early, we know quarterbacks are going early. We know receivers are going early. If the edge guys go earlier than maybe expected in some of the mocks, they can move up and get a really good tackle, David. Seattle doesn't have a second round pick. They're drafting at 16. If you're Green Bay at 25, do you make a deal with Seattle? You move up to 16. Now you bring a lot into the equation. You might be able to get the best corner in the draft at 16, but I know you'll be able to get the second best corner. You know, sitting at 25, you're hoping Kool-Aid McKinstry falls to you, the third best corner. But you can get Terry on Arnold or the Toledo kid at 16. You might have your pick of all the corners. And Green Bay needs a corner. You know, that to me, you know, you're interested in Arizona, and I'm fascinated if I'm Green Bay. Do I take those five top 91 picks and turn them into three? No, I, I am the most fascinated with Green Bay, but just Pat turned me on to Arizona because I just kept thinking Arizona's primed to trade out of that spot. And the fact of the matter is, with all those picks, they may not be primed to trade out of it. And how about that little nugget that Pat threw in at the end? And the Giants love J.J. McCarthy. Really? Interesting. Hmm. I kind of want that to happen to see how you react to that. Oh, actually, I think he'd be ecstatic because I was with him when they drafted Daniel Jones. And it was the oh my God moment that I've never seen out of Moulton in public before. I think you'd be excited of any quarterback getting drafted. So Danny Dimes' days are done in New York. Listen, I don't want this to sound disparaging towards my father. All right. I love my father. I did. Okay. He was a good guy, not a good dad, but he was a really good, fun dude. I did the show the day my father died. Okay. So Mark was with me the day my father died and the day the Giants drafted Daniel Jones. Mark, which did I take harder? Oh, it's not even close the day they drafted Daniel Jones. Thank you. I'm just saying, and dad, if you're, you know, paying attention right now, I love you. I do. But, you know, I don't know what to tell you. They had three first round picks. They blew all three and it started right away. Daniel Jones at six. Now here they are at six. Quarterback from Duke. Yeah. They had taken another quarterback from Duke in the first round 25 years earlier. It did not work out well. They forced <laughs> Phil Sims into retirement for this guy. He sucked. Wonder if UConn has a quarterback. <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> so yeah, I'd be fine with it. That's good to know. And we'll be doing our draft show on Twitch once again. Trent, are you going to join us for this one? If you'll let me. Of Absolutely. Course. Yeah, I would love to. I got to see what it's all about. <laughs> I'm going poolside for this draft. Uh-oh. There may be a cannonball involved at some point. That'd be fantastic. I mean, I'll have to go. We won't have it on camera. I can do one, too. I just have to go down three flights. It's a hell of a jump. <laughs> well, yes, it would be. I mean, I'll probably get thrown out of the condo development at the hour. I'll have to do it just early enough in the early part of the first round. If I do it in the late part of the first round, I have to move. Oh, the pool will be closed. You'll get a letter, and things will go downhill from there, David. Oh. Somebody's hopping the fence. It's all about the draft. Giants took a quarterback. Cannonball! Ah, uh, good, bad, and ugly. What's on tap today's the day when? It's all next. Visit Jason and Todd. 
at the Diamond District. Are you ready for an event like no other? Join Jason and Todd at the Diamond District this weekend for their exclusive estate buying and selling event. It's time to dust off the old jewelry and dig out those fine timepieces you no longer wear. The Diamond District will pay top dollar for your unwanted treasures. Why let your valuable pieces gather dust when they could be putting cash in your pocket? That's not all. For those looking for exquisite jewelry at unbeatable prices, the Diamond District has you covered with a stunning selection of estate jewelry, meticulously curated and priced to sell. From dazzling diamonds and exotic gemstones to timeless Rolex watches, you'll find the perfect piece to elevate your style. Join the Diamond District this weekend for their estate buying and selling event, where they pay more for your jewelry and fine timepieces and sell for less. Don't miss out. Jason and Todd are in the store nearly every day and look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to their Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095 that's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. Where did the Giants get LT? North Carolina, second overall pick of the draft. 81. Okay, so he was he was supposed to be. Yeah, Saints took right. uh, George Rogers, running back, South Carolina. What year? 81. God. Belichick. No, Parcells. Parcells tells a history. Hysterical story about LT. Belichick's the linebackers coach. Parcells, the defensive coordinator. First practice. And the Giants have not a good team. They got a good good defense. Really good linebacking core. But George Young just said players too good to take, you know, pass up. So we're taking them. And so they have them second team to start the first practice. And um, basically, he wasn't blocked on a single play, and every play got blown dead in the morning session of practice because LT got to the quarterback and just grabbed the quarterback. That's it. Play was over because he couldn't hit the quarterback, but he, you know, grabbed. And so um, Belichick and Parcells met, and they're like – yeah, I don't think I've never seen anything like this before, but um, I think we have to demote someone at lunch. And they're like, they had a veteran linebacking crew. They they were in a 4 3 at the time. They had Brad Van Pelt on one side, Brian Kelly, Harry Carson. They're like, yeah, we, we got to demote someone. Got to get this guy in the field. It's on to Cincinnati. Bel- the funniest story about LT, though, is uh, Belichick and uh, LT's asleep in the meeting. And Belichick's changing the entire game plan. They're going to show up they're for a playoff game against the Bears. And then they're going to, you know, play a 4-3 defense. And they've been playing a 3-4 for 10 years. And uh, LT's asleep at the meeting. And finally, Belichick gets pissed and he throws a piece of chalk at him. And says, can you tell me what we're going to do? Okay. You seem real interested in this. Can you tell me? And apparently LT gets up, picks the chalk up. All right. And Belichick like wiped the thing clean. And LT proceeds to draw everything 
that Belichick was talking about and all the options and this, that, and the other thing. And he flips him the chalk and he says, if you ever effing do that again, I'll effing kill you. And sits back down in the chair and go and resumes his nap. <laughs> That's why, what was it? What was it a few years ago? Was it Parsons or was it somebody else? Asking uh, Belichick, you know, you, you've had great pass rushers before, you know, the LT, blah, 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 and then before the guy could ask the question, he goes, "Hey, uh, hold on a second here. Uh, yeah, you you said Lawrence Taylor. Yeah, there's there's nobody like Lawrence Taylor. I mean, this guy you're about to mention, he's really good. He's, he's a very good player and all that. He's not LT. Okay, it just don't 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 do it." And the guy tries to continue with the question. Bill's going, yeah, the, no. Trent Jaworski called the timeout. LT's rookie year. Jaworski's only played him a game and a half. He calls a timeout in the game. He goes to the sideline. And Vermeil says, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I couldn't find LT. Okay, and so we didn't have the right blocking scheme. I couldn't find him, so I got to call timeout. We got to account for him. And Vermeil goes, he's standing on the sidelines, you blankety blank. And there's LT. LT sipping a cup of water goes like this to Ron. God, that's funny. A little different game then. A little different game. Could be a little okay. more intimidating. Here we go. Defense. Three, two, one. Welcome to the bonus hour, brought to you by Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 22 minutes till the top of the hour, 16 until we're out of here. Miller and Moulton, millerandmoulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. Seth Everett will be on the show tomorrow, and we'll continue our Masters preview. Talk to another golf writer from the Masters. And then we'll have some stats, Mark. We'll have some factoids. To narrow it down is to, listen, you know, one of these golfers right here is going to win, and we got the stuff to prove it. Yeah, I found out the other day my son's going back to Augusta this year for a second trip. I told uh, him I took my dad once. <laughs> Did he get it or no? Oh, no, he got it. Okay. No, he's actually pulled free, but it's a, it's a you know, it's a work thing. It's his right. boss, his family. And right. They're not his tickets. They're not his tickets. Right. So, gotcha. But if I get the call in the next couple of days, I'm gone. No, no, no. We get it. No, we understand how that works. You know, I was thinking we were going to lose Trent because apparently his parents are going, right? They're yeah. on their way today. They left this morning. There was a big fiasco with their tickets, but they're at will call, apparently. My dad won't believe it until they're physically in his I, hand. And he's I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't blame him. He won all. the lottery. I mean, we actually won- know someone that won the Masters lottery for. Tickets. Oh, oh, the Masters lottery! I thought you were talking about that one point three billion Powerball. Harder to win the Masters tickets. I don't know if you're aware. I I, I understand. Plus, you just can't go to your Publix and Seven Eleven and and get and just buy them. I no, know. that's a, that's a tradition unlike any other. When you get the rejection letter from the Masters every year. <laughs> uh, Trent, any chance? Like, do any of the siblings get to go with them to the Augusta? Nope. So it's just the two of them. Just mom and dad. That's it? That's it. That's all they got. Is this his way of getting back at the rest of the family because you guys axed him out of that first Lions game for a girlfriend? I knew. How did I know you were going there? I knew you were going to make a comparison to that. Well, and maybe I, it is. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm very territorial here. Either that or, he's, you know, mom or dad's going to take that brother's girlfriend. One of the other. That's she what apparently, I was thinking. She's like the third highest ranking member of the family, apparently. 
It's time for someone to take back this segment, if for no other reason than to stop David from talking about Meghan and Harry. Here's Mark Miller with Today Was the Day When. All right, I got a bunch of sports stuff, but I've got, you know, two biggies. Well, one biggie and one that I found interesting. Today in 1768, John Hancock refused to let British customs go below deck of his ship. It was considered by some as the first physical resistance to the Brits. Okay. There you go. Like 1865, Robert E. Lee surrenders, ending the Civil War. 1950, Jimmy DeMerit wins his third Masters. In 59, the Celtics sweep the Minneapolis Lakers. Would be their first of eight straight titles. Arnold Palmer wins his third Masters today in 62. Beat player in a Monday playoff. Player was the defending champion. Palmer had won it the year before that. Nicholas goes wire to wire for his fourth green jacket today in 72. Today in 78, 42-year-old Gary Player wins the Masters. I think he shot 64 on Sunday to come from behind and win it. That was his final Masters. And that night... Going for the scoring title, David Thompson goes for 73 and George Gervin goes for 63. (laughs) Not that their teammates knew who needed what to win the scoring title or anything. Today in 1987, Gretzky becomes the all-time leading playoff scorer after having one goals and six assists in the game. It was his third seven-point game in the playoffs. Unreal. Nick Feldo talking here, 87. 87. That same day, Nick Feldo won his first Masters. 95, Crenshaw wins his second green jacket. Today, Baghdad fell to U.S. forces in 2003, ending that conflict. Phil gets his second green jacket today in 06. Sergio wins in 2017, and John Rahm was the winner a year ago. Curly Lambeau, Hugh Hefner, and Seve Ballesteros would have all celebrated birthdays today. And that's all I got, David. What did I miss? Well, you know, a few things went on today. Uh, Rita Moreno won her Oscar uh, today in 62. But, uh, and by the way, if I can go back. So, uh, Robert E. Lee surrendered today in 1865. Has the South officially recognized that? No. Okay. Or is that is that still, is that like, you know. Now that the, you're in the South, you're aware. Right. I was just wondering whether or not we think, I mean, did they really sign the papers? You know, is this like all of a sudden you're finding out, wait a minute, you're not divorced? Oh, I, I filed my paperwork. You know, I mean, just wondering. I don't know. It seems still up for debate. That's all I'm saying. All right. Uh, hey, Prince Charles and Camilla celebrating their 19th anniversary today. And let me tell you, you talk about a good looking couple and you know, Chuck and Camilla there, 19 uh, years. Of course, they've been together for like 34 years. They were having an affair forever, but you know, that it's, you know, just made it official. You've heard folks elsewhere mock, Florida is gonna Florida. Well, Mark Miller sees it differently. He calls it the good, the bad, and the ugly. What you got, Mark? We go to Detroit, where police in Harper Woods responded to a call about a stray dog. They picked up the dog, contacted Animal Welfare Group. It had a chip. The dog was from California. And they found the dog in Michigan. Dog's been reunited with his family. For the bad, we go to Utah, where a man in West Valley City, Utah, released some frustration by firing a dozen shots into his wall, where his roommate was sleeping on the other side. Man stated he was feeling bad about his financial situation 
and that he misses his child and was thinking about hurting himself, but decided not to shoot himself and to fire 15 rounds into the wall where his roommate sleeps on the other side. Fortunately, his roommate was not injured. And for the ugly, we go to Venice. Where Mary, Mary Hollenbach heard rattling on the front screen door of her house. She went to see what the disturbance was and realized that an eight-foot alligator had made its way into her kitchen. She said she got a little nervous, grabbed her phone, and called 911. A little nervous. It was an eight-foot alligator in her kitchen. Can you imagine sitting at the kitchen table or sitting on your couch in the living room, and all of a sudden, a gator starts walking? No! Into your house? No, I can't. Snake on the porch, that's one thing. Alligator in the kitchen's quite another. And that, David, is the good, the bad, and the ugly on today, April the 9th, 2024. Well, remember, we got no more college troop. Okay, it's over. It's done. Zip, zilch, nada. Men's, women's, nothing. Okay? So it's just back to NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball. What have we learned about the National Hockey League? It's a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday league. Today is Tuesday. 13 games in the NHL. Listen, biggest game your team, guys, has played in what, six years? Easily. Trent, when's the last time the Wings played a bigger game than the one that they're hosting tonight against the Caps? Wings right now hold down the final playoff spot. Caps a point back. 7 o'clock, four-letter network, by the way. And there's a lot of meaningful games with playoff ramifications. You know, the Flyers are in Montreal. Uh, by the way, Lightning and Panthers should both get wins tonight. Tampa Bay is hosting Columbus, and Panthers are hosting Ottawa. They're both big favorites. Lightning are minus 340. They're such a big favorite. But my biggest game on the docket tonight, you could argue, is Caps Wings. Agreed 100%. I don't think Detroit's played a more meaningful game since their last playoff series, and they've had a hell of a drought in the postseason. And maybe so even before that. I mean, it's been close to a decade since they played. You no, know, because at the end there, when they were just hanging on and keeping the playoff streak alive, that's all that was. You're right. Uh, Double header of hockey on ESPN tonight, 930 Minnesota and Colorado, which doesn't have a ton of meaning. I guess Colorado's trying to chase down Dallas for the division title, but they're like five points back. So there you go. Big hockey game tonight. Caps and Wings. Uh, Heat and Magic both on the road. Heat and Atlanta. You know, that could be a play-in game. Probably not. And uh, Orlando and Houston. Magic can be the two seed. They're a game behind Milwaukee for the two seed. They own the tiebreaker over the Knicks right now. The Orlando Magic today are the three seed in the East. Orlando Magic. And Milwaukee's hosting Boston. And Milwaukee's Milwaukee. docks taken over is below 500. And they've lost four in a row. Right. TNT tonight, 7.30 for uh, Boston at Milwaukee. You're not going to believe this. I will say, Golden State and the Lakers are tonight in Los Angeles. That's a late game on TNT. They're both going to play each other in the, the play-in at 9.10. This game is probably going to determine who hosts the game. Lakers are a game and a half up on the Warriors. Lakers win. You know, they actually then have a chance to move out of the 9-10 game and move up to the 8. But Golden State wins, then, you know, we don't know who's going to host that 9-10 playoff game. So, there you go. Boy, is Adam Silver happy that it's going to be Warriors-Lakers again in the play-in. Right. Losers out. Winner has to go on the road and win just to get in the main tournament. I just want to see the Hawks win their plan because they beat Boston both those times and have them end up getting Boston just to see what the hell would happen. I, That'd be fun. Yeah. 
And here's the funny thing. Atlanta's played better without Trey Young than with him. And he's coming back tonight? Well, he's practicing this, okay, week. practicing this week. And so in theory, they'll try to get him in one game before the end of the season. Then, of course, he's your star player. So once he's ready to play, what do you have to do? You got to play him. So there you go. Uh, baseball, I mean, you know the drill. They're, they're all playing. Right? It's just everybody playing. Red Sox home opener. Yeah. Open the Orioles today at 2 o'clock. Uh, you're, by the way, if you guys are bored, your Tigers are playing the Pirates at 1230. Mighty Nooner. There you go. Uh, you can take a nap in between your Tigers and your wings. It's a full day, guys. Uh, race the Tigers, but uh, they have lost three in a row. So got to get off the schneid today, boys. Come on. They're still six and four, though. You take that. Oh, of course. Uh, Rays are still in Anaheim against the Angels. And uh, are they, uh, the Yankees, of course, are hosting the Marlins, the one in 10 Marlins. You get like plus 200 if you bet the Marlins tonight. How You're could only... you bet the Marlins right now? I, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I really don't. I mean, Although I will, is... I mean, AJ, how could you bet against AJ Puck? I mean, he's 0 2 with an ERA of nine. Really? I'm kidding. Might play the over. <laughs> That's true. So, uh, yeah, there you go. In fact, I might parlay the Yankees, the Lightning, and the Panthers today. Ooh. On the money line or the points? Money line. Well, just a three-team straight win parlay. By the way, Cubs Padres tonight, 10 o'clock on TBS. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, TBS. It's the Cubs. People are interested. They blew an 8-0 lead last night, lost 9-8. We had a texture to the show say he had the under in that game hmm it looks good for a long time that was a miscalculation right. we're on a roll man we, we went two and oh yesterday did miller and molten not trent he lost all his uh, parents money yesterday purdue money line purdue plus six and a half whatever told you yukon lay the points bet the under miller and molten two and oh We'll see if we can. It's a hot week, baby. And Tiger to win the Masters. Book it. Oh, boy. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence. 